and children of the fog, welcome to the 5.30 patch notes commentary from Old Man Bronze. There's a little hope and a lot of salt. Welcome. All right, my friends, <clears throat> let it begin. Patch notes, 5.30, player test build. I did not play this one. I could not bear it. Hmm. But content, added new survivor, Michaela Reed. Uh, that's all good. Bring in the boon totems. That's not so much. Updated the character selection portraits for several survivors. David, Jake, Nia, Kate, Quentin, and Feng. All good. Pretty cosmetic goodness. That's all fine. <clears throat> Balance. Let's jump in, my friends. Um, item and add-on descriptions have been rewritten. Considerably and other vague terms have been replaced with number values. Um, this is something that people have wanted for a long time. So this is actually a good thing. Like, you know, we have, we have uh, you know, slightly, moderately, considerably... You know, like, it's, it's, it's this thing where you never knew, like, what kind of, like, how fast this actually makes you or how much it actually speeds up a thing. So that's actually fine. Like, it, it's long, long, long overdue. And, 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 you know, I guess it's here. So that's great. Um, that's, that's a positive. Add in reminder text for status effects. Any add-ons that trigger status effects also include a brief description on the status effect. So a little more descriptive. Once again, trying to make stuff easier for people who are new to the game. And that is... That's fine. Uh, the hatch will only appear when one survivor is left alive. So this is a big one. <clears throat> this is this is this is a very very big one. Uh, as someone who is a killer enthusiast, um, there has been so many games where I have fought so hard and uh, played really well and played fair, played straight, and had the last three people left, one gen, we're battling it out, and then I'm looking around for somebody, and boom, they all disappear. Like literally probably the worst feeling in the game to work that hard and play that good of a game And then all of a sudden like one key they didn't even bring in a key They found it in a chest for God's sake and gone like Redonkulous. Um, I know survivors aren't gonna like this one and I know people who are fans of the stream and who are fans of survivors And I'm a fan of survivors too. Like I mean I like playing it, but like like this this is uh a year ago they nerfed Mori's, right? And keys were supposed to come along with it. This was the answer to nerfing keys, is they just are now going to only let one survivor out and it will only appear when that last person is alive. So no one can camp the hatch. There is a, there's a nice, they say a nice thing down here too. Like the hatch is effectively, is is effectively the much asked for key nerf in disguise uh, preventing survivors from exiting a trial prematurely it is also intended to reduce situations where survivors would camp at the hatch waiting for their teammates to die so they could escape um and that that was another situation that always felt bad like you would have someone you'd be getting down the last two people you're trying to be a good killer and not slug for the 4k and all of a sudden you get that that third person on the hook they immediately dc and the other person disappears to the hatch like it's just it, the hatch has always been a broken mechanic and I mean, i'm not saying that there's not you know killer mechanics that haven't been broken either but like the hatch has always always been a problem in the game back in the day it used to be hatch standoffs like i I, I took part in hatch standoffs that lasted 45 minutes like neither one of us would budge and there was nothing to stop it like so when they changed the hatch <clears throat> and 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 it's in the state that it is in now um that that did make it better but it, it didn't fix the the problems with the hatch and, and keys and how powerful they were like Mori's like you could you could take someone out after the first hook and that 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 should have been changed or was the second hook? I don't remember now. Like I'm getting old. Um, now it is like on the you know either you death hook them, they're they're on their third hook, um, or you mori them. And I think that that was a fine way to use them. But instead of now having to take up an add-on slot for it, I would really really like if 
Moris were just baseline. Like you could choose either to hook them or to Mori them. And and Mori would maybe be, you know, less score like it is now, um, whatever. But then get rid of that ridiculous add on that and, and give us something good. Like I would rather use blood points every match anyway. Um, <clears throat> I'd play more party streamers. I'd do stuff like that if I could mori people at the end of the game if I wanted to. Um, the survivors can open the hatch after it's been kicked shut by using a key. That's fair. Like, if you find it and you kick it shut, they can still open it with the key. That's that's fine. Um, if, you, if you haven't found them and they're running around with the key, you got bigger problems. So... Um, that's fine, absolutely. Key interaction takes two and a half seconds and does not lose progress when interrupted. This, once again, is something else that was much needed. Like, having someone, like, I, I play games where, like, the last person, um, you know, I had, I had closed the hatch and the last person did have the key, right? Or found a key while they were sneaking around the map, like, and not leaving scratch marks or doing anything like that. And, um, and then they make a whole bunch of noise, you know, jump over pallets or, you know, fast fall through windows, whatever. And I would, you know, go over, obviously, and look for them. And they would just just run over and just hop in to the hatch. There was, like, no cooldown whatsoever. It was just all you had to do was click the button. And that was broken. Like, that was not cool. Like, that was that was not rewarding. Like, playing a good game and as a killer... Like, I'm not saying you should always get rewarded with a 4K. Like, I mean, but we have no clear win condition in, in Dead by Daylight. So, like, for killers, it's 4K. For survivors, it's everybody gets out alive. You know, like, there is no middle ground. And that's where Dead by Daylight's heading. They want they want it to be, like, two people die and two people escape. And that's 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 what we're seeing right now. Like, and, and I don't think anybody's going to be satisfied with that. Like, it's 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 just it's it's not. Um, we'll keep going though. Uh, so the two and a half seconds for the key interaction, I think, is is honestly it's fair. Like, I I've had nightmares about people just hopping in the hatch right in front of me, um, not being able to do anything to stop it, and uh, not having a counter to something is something that Dead by Daylight has worked hard to do for many years like you know everything has to have a counter like every killer thing has a counter in the survivor side you know whether it's the number of survivors whether it's perks whether it's even just skill like everything is supposed to have a counter and it never did and and now that it does like that's great like <clears throat> if this is the best thing that comes out of the patch i wouldn't be surprised uh, but I know that survivors are not going to be happy, especially like just pure survivor mains. Um, like, I mean, it's fun to make that thrilling, like, you know, two, three people get out of the game, you know, with a magical key that you found in the basement hatch escape. I get that. Um, but but there are other people playing the game too, and you got to remember that like we're, we're we're people too. We're not just punching bags, and it's 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 not as fun as you want it to be, right? So this is fair. Like I'm I'm this is probably the best thing to come out of the PTR. Um, I know people aren't gonna like it, but um, please believe me when I say killers are probably very happy. Honestly, like it's 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 a decent change, and it's long past due. Um, like sometimes they feel like they're afraid to set off their player base on the survivor side you know killers are pretty dedicated a lot of people play both sides sometimes and um but but the straight like survivor mains like it's a big portion of the audience and 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 pissing them off by doing something like this is 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 tough like they've waited an entire year to make a change to keys that they thought was fair and viable after just like making Mori's a non-issue, you know, basically it's a cosmetic kill at the end of the game now instead of being something that could, you know, significantly change the course of the game, much like a key can. And um, so there's that. Um, the achievement of where did they go uh, has been changed to the key of escaping. So that's not a big deal. They're just adjusting for the changes. So that's the hatch. Um, I mean, that's, it's kind of a big deal. And um, I mean, the add-on thing is fine. And um, once again, a long, long, long overdue. And, uh, but the hatch, this is, this is a big deal. Like this, this really is. And I mean, that, that gives me hope that uh, they, they, they do play their own game and they do understand, but still kind of painful. Um, has been for about five years. So, <clears throat> um, it's always been a problem. I don't know what the good solution is, but this is better than what it has been. So uh, that just uh, sets off this section. We're gonna start going down the killer list and we'll be right back. Oh, the trapper. 
How are you doing, my friend? You are getting some buffs. <clears throat> after being the first killer in the game, after five years, his base trap carrying capacity and starting traps increased to two was one. Uh, this is one of the worst things on the Trapper. Like, Trapper is tough as it is. Like, he's kind of hit and miss. Like, if you have a great game, you have a great game. Uh, but if you have a bad game, it is embarrassingly bad. And a lot of that is is set up, like getting out in the map and getting stuff set up before someone is following you, disabling all your traps all game. So getting getting a good two, three traps down um, before you, you got into the map, because you need to get in the map to stop people from doing generators, um, you always, always, always needed to do a bad add-on. Like you needed, you know, either the either the yellow or the purple. The brown one was fine in a pinch, but I mean, you 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 wanted a bag add-on, and then whatever else you wanted to run. So it really limited your options as far as what you could play. You just had to play a bag add-on and whatever else you were gonna do. Otherwise, like, <clears throat> not that fun. Like uh, starting out with just the the couple traps was really bad so you're you're busy chasing around traps from the beginning of the game all the way through the game and so being able to set up a couple extra um, to start off helps a lot and it's something that people have been asking for five years for and this is the buff he gets an extra trap like after five years <sighs> but a little trapper love doesn't hurt. Trap aura changed from red to white to be consistent with other killer object auras. So they're, they're changing some of those things uh, so they're easier to see, and I think that's cool. Um, number of traps uh, spawned on a given map is now always six. Was random before. So like sometimes you would be like, whoa, I don't have enough traps here. And uh, and that's why, like it was, it was random. Um, but now, so that's great, always six. Give me as many traps as I can get. I still have to walk around the map to pick them up and, and do all that stuff with it. So uh, I still gotta chase them down, find them, drop them down, set them in the hope that someone's not watching and then just comes behind me after I walk away and disarms them. Okay, so add-ons. So they, they obviously had to make some adjustments to the add-ons, um, so we're going to run through them real quick. I don't want to spend a ton of time on the add-ons because there was a lot of stuff that they changed, um, and, and we'll just kind of give a, a real brief, like, this is what it does. Um, is this good? Is this bad? Is this whatever? Um, add-on. Trapper gloves. The setting speed increased to 30%. Was 20%. Um, fantastic. Um, like setting speed is strong um it, it helps you you can actually put down traps and loops if you're running really good uh trap setting add-ons um not that you're going to like fool anybody or you know like pick off people like you might with the hag but sometimes it helps so add on wax brick trap escape modifier removed added effect 33 percent increase to rescue and escape time rarity increase oh decrease to uncommon was rare so this wasn't all that great before um i mean i i rarely used it like you needed to use like the purple brick like the honing stone and um uh so that's fine um the the escape modifier is taken out so that whole thing where like you could only you can only max like six stacks like six attempts at getting out of the trap and then there is a percentile chance so it makes it a little harder to get out on your first try but progressively makes it way way easier until if you failed each of those checks you will get out on your sixth try so i believe what this is doing it says uh trap escape modifier remove i assume it means that and also add effect 33 percent increase to rescue and escape time that's a, that's significant like a lot of times if you are heading towards somebody like and they pop out of the trap especially now that they made those changes to kind of the rng um of it and made it more of a percentage chance thing each each try uh, a lot of times you can see some people getting out of the trap like even if they don't get up the first time all you gotta do is press the button one try press the button two tries press the button three tries with a very small cooldown in between them so it's not like it was that tough if you're on if you're a decent away away from the trapper um you're gonna get out like there's not a real problem there right um add on trapper bag reduces the number of additional traps to one was two so since you're getting an extra one at base like it's an extra trap 
um, you still might want to run these, honestly. Like, I probably still would too, but we'll, we'll see what the rest of them have to do. Uh, add on. Secondary coil, increased trap disarm time to 50%, was 43. So they buffed that slightly, but it really doesn't take that much time. And most of the time when people are disarming traps, they're doing it when you're gone. And um, it, sometimes it's helpful, it gives you a little location on where people are, but really, like, if someone's following you around, if you're playing a good squad and they're, they're on to you, and, you know, they'll just have three people do gens, or one person that you're chasing, two people on a gen, and one person just following you around, disarming traps. And uh, it, it feels super bad. This is not going to help at all. Like, it, a 7% increase is, is not going to make any difference whatsoever. It's not add on that I've ever used. I probably have 70 of them. Um, <clears throat> add on fastening tools. Trap escape modifier removed again. Added 25%. Increased the rescue and escape time. Already increased to rare. Was a very rare. Um, once again, fantastic. Anything that helps keep someone in a trap uh, longer is, is better, right? Um, reworked add-on. Oily coil. When resetting a bear trap, reveal the true reveal the aura of the most recent survivor to disarm it for five seconds. Kind of interesting. Gives you a little information. Um, but um, I don't know. Like I, I'm kind of ambivalent about it. Like it's neat, but I don't know if I would run it over, you know, like additional like trap setting speed. Um, or even these these ones where you're you're gonna get um, you know, a, a longer escape and disarm time. Uh, well, no, a longer escape and, and rescue time out of the traps. Like, I, I, you know, like half the time, you're probably gonna see someone, you know, halfway across the map, um, and then aura reading really doesn't matter. Like, oh, they're over there in that corner of the map. Let me take the next 37 seconds to run over there to find out they're not still there. Um... So a reworked add-on, uh, trap attack bear traps are carried at the beginning of the trial. So this is, instead of spawning on the map, bear traps cannot be picked up. This one, I believe, is the ultra rare, um, the, you know, the fancy pink add-on. And so instead of like the traps being all out on the field, you carry all your traps with you at the beginning of the game. And as you set them, they will stay there. You cannot pick them up. So if you're gonna set them down, um, you better set them down well. And it's tricky, like it sounds neat, but the, but the truth is like the game moves uh, during the game, like depending on which, which gens are done. And if you decide to set up kind of in a general area because they are kind of specific, these traps, right? Like they've kind of got to go in certain places and some places work better than others. And you kind of, as the trapper, want to be kind of guarding an area. You're a defensive killer. Um, you know, you're not teleporting around the map or, or whacking people with chainsaws, you're trapping them. And so, um, you know, if, if they're able to get gens done in that area uh, while you're chasing people around the rest of the map or doing whatever you're doing, once you, you're in an area where there's don't, no traps whatsoever, like you're, you're, you're machete guy. You're angry, angry machete guy. And angry machete guy, um, isn't very scary like he's 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 very easy to beat he he can't do anything fancy his traps are what make him good um, there is nothing else baked into him outside of that so if you have to put down all of your traps at the beginning of the game or not even just the beginning of the game you're not going to take two minutes or three minutes or whatever to lay down whatever like nine ten traps um like as you as you lay them like you lose them like if there's nothing going on in that area you just lost a trap and i don't know if that's great and it's and it's meant to be a fancy uh you know fancy ultra rare and um it's, it's kind of neat but there is another add-on i believe coming up that with paired with it makes it a little more helpful um but uh here we go a new add-on uh bear oil sitting a bear trap is silent not that big a deal um probably not even necessary like I'm kind of wondering what's disappearing when these are coming in not that all of his, his add-ons are great I mean you really want you know setting speed or the, or the, the, the deep dark purple dye um, that works very well helps hide the traps better it makes it harder to pick them out for people to disarm them and also easier to walk into them uh, but setting a bear trap is silent I mean it makes noise but seriously like it's that's whatever 
Uh, new add-on, makeshift wrap. The trapper cannot be caught by his bear traps. Uh, the bear traps will be disarmed if the trapper steps on it. So, as someone who's played a lot of trapper and is the only other killer besides the hag that I have taken into P3, um, out of love, um, they, uh, like, I have, I have stepped in my share of traps. Like, I have felt like a giant potato um, on many occasions. And, and so this is not a bad add-on to have. There's a lot of times where you might misjudge it because you have, like, you know, your, your point of view is, is far different than survivors where they can see everything around them 360 degrees if they spin around and whatever and they can look around. You are, have a very limited point of view and sometimes you think you're moving over to the side of the trap to go around it and you're not going far enough. But yet, that same survivor just like walked right by it and, and missed it by two inches and still didn't get trapped. But your model is bigger, so like that that is part of what works into that too. So sometimes this would be nice, but I don't want to have to carry an add-on for it so I don't step into my traps. You might be able to pull some sneaky shenanigans against a survivor um, who thinks that you're going to get stuck in your trap, um, but honestly, like it sounds cool, um, there are worse add-ons in the game. So, I mean, that's cool. Um, copy grinds. Gains a 5% haste status effect for 5 seconds after setting a bear trap. Sort of interesting, like, sort of like a, a little bit of a, a little, little speed boost. I'm not sure if the haste effect applies to movement speed or to, like, your, your swing speed. You know, like, save the best for last kind of thing. Um, not sure. Um, might be interesting to play with, but probably not. A lot of times you're trying to set traps, um, not so much in loops, but um, like while you're actually actively in a loop to where that haste would benefit you, um, but uh, but you're off in the middle of nowhere, making sure, like hoping that no one sees you setting those traps so they stay traps and, and not just pieces of metal on the ground that people have disarmed. Um, <clears throat> it might help get you from place to place a little quicker if it's for movement speed, but if it's just for um, your swing speed and recovery, um, then I don't really think that there's anything that there. Uh, new add-on, lengthen jaws, bear traps inflict deep wounds on survivors. That's fine. Um, that's sort of a step down from the, um, um, you know, the, the, the brick that, you know, puts them into the dying state. Um, but uh, but there wasn't anything else besides that, so so that's fine. Like I mean, it's like the next step down. Um, getting in a trap injures you, obviously. So I mean, the deep wounds is extra, you know, a little stall. Uh, but most of the time, the people who are stepping into traps hopefully are people you're putting on hooks, so it would be pretty useless. Um, but not unworth running. Give it a go. Um, <clears throat> tension spring. The bear trap resets two seconds after a survivor escapes from it. Now this one, I don't know what the rarity is, but good lord. The bear trap resets two seconds after a survivor escapes from it. So not not on disarms, but if, if a survivor gets into one and then escapes, you know, they, they hit the button enough times and they escape, um, two seconds afterward, it resets. So, like, if they don't know you're running this, like, and they come back around the corner and it's a loop or whatever, like, that trap is reset again. That one is super cool. Like, that is that is that is nice. I wish it was from um, you know after people like disarm them, but um, that's still a decent add-on, and you might surprise a few people from time to time with it. So. <clears throat> The following add-ons have been removed. Strong coil spring, trap setters, logwood die, setting tools, stitch bag. Stitch bag, I think, was the big bag, the purple bag. Um, so, I don't know. Like, I mean, they gave us one extra trap. And, um, and now we just have, at least what it sounds like, is maybe just one bag add-on. I don't know. There might still be two. It might still be the base brown one and then... Um, and then the trapper bag right there. Reduced number of additional traps to one was to um, rarity increased to rare was uncommon. So that might be it. Like that was the brown one. Oh God, we'll have to see how, we'll have to see the add-ons when they're done. Um, <clears throat> logwood die. Logwood die was the bad die. Like it, it really didn't do much for you. Um, the setting tools and stitch bag. Setting tools, um, once again, are for speed of setting. And there are a couple things in there that they have put in to, um, uh, you know, still help you with uh, setting fast traps. But 
Um, we'll see. And new bear trap sound effects when using a padded jaws add-on. Um, obviously, it's not making the same sound. Ah, developers know the Trapper is DVD's oldest killer, and he needed some love to bring him up to our modern standard of play. Uh, many of these changes are focused around bringing him into line with how the rest of the killers behave. Traps have been balanced to provide a more consistent game experiences, and his add-ons have been overhauled to give a greater variety of options. Like, that's welcome. Like, honestly, if they would have done this two years ago, like, I, I would have been all over it. Like, I love playing the Trapper. Um, like, it's really, really rewarding when you play well, and, but he also feels like crap when someone just running around, like, disarming all your crap, or you don't have time to pick up enough traps because you ran out of bag add-ons, and, you, you know, you have, like, just a couple to start out with, and it... There was a lot of things, and they let it go on for a long time, like five years, to give him an extra trap, and then nerf his bag add-ons. Like, I don't even... Uh, there's some interesting things in there, and um, and I will always play Trapper. Um, I will I will always enjoy him, um, even even when I get slapped around because there's those games that you're just like, Arr! and and he's scary. Like if you get ahead, like and you're you're doing well with your traps. Like the Trapper is scary. Like not like five thousand hour nurse main scary, but um, but he can be tough, and uh, and that's why I've always enjoyed him. Like he's not broken, he's not overpowered, but you know if you play well, you can you can get rewarded. So, um, but uh, that that's kind of my overlook on on the Trapper. Um, I think that there's some. It's long past time that that he simply got an extra trap base kit. Like he could have used two, or or give him three, you know, extra base kit and get rid of all the bag add-ons. Whatever. Like I mean, these things would not have been hard, and they could have done this so long ago. Um, it wouldn't have been hard to do, like changing a couple numbers, and that was it. But it took five years, and. Um, We'll see how the rest of those go. Um, we'll definitely play him out and try him out when he comes out of the PTR, and uh, we'll go from there. But otherwise, that's kind of the wrap up of the Trapper. Like it's it's decent, it's positive, um, but it also is something that's long overdue, and um, I'll still play him. Yeah. All right. Much love. Next up, the Wraith. Actually, you know what? Since we're here, the Wraith is right here. It's pretty short. Um, uncloaking speed boost duration. Uh, reduced to one second was 1.25 seconds add-on all-seeing blood aura reveal range increased to 8 meters was 12 meters developers notes recent busts of the wraith have made him feel a wee bit overpowered so these changes are intended to adjust to the most obviously overpowered elements um, we'll continue to monitor how he performs and potentially have more changes in forum in the future So the Wraith used to be the absolute worst killer in the game, hands down, and for a very long time, um, he was. And uh, you used to have to uncloak to kick a gen, or break a pallet, or do pretty much anything outside. If you could vault the window, but that was it. Um, so like if someone dropped the pallet in front of you, you had to uncloak, which took a couple seconds, and then you had to kick the pallet, which took a couple seconds, and then the survivor was gone. Um, some very, very hardcore people would play him because he did have, you know, some extra movement speed while cloaked around the map and stuff, but he really got a couple of quality life uh, buffs um, and, and some adjustments to his speed and, um, and and then his invisibility where he was completely invisible out of 16 outside of 16 meters I think uh, which, which which helped a ton like just I mean they were they were things that should have been done a long time ago but now because some people have started playing them and were like wow the race good like now the wraith is getting adjusted like i don't think it's really necessary all seeing blood um the add-on is is an ultra rare honestly if you're running those every game you're not going to have any um so but dropping it down to eight meters is fine like uh that you're really using that for you know getting a little jump on somebody in a loop um doesn't mean you're going to win that loop if that survivor is still good it doesn't matter if you see them like they are very good at what they do and and they have the tools uh, to, to keep avoiding you, but it does help, honestly. Like it's a nice add-on, but it's an ultra rare. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna play like nothing but wraith, you're gonna run out of them in a day, and um, unless unless you've been stockpiling them. Uh, the speed boost duration, uh, the lunge, uh, and it's got a quarter second nerf on it. I mean that doesn't feel great, but you just what? I mean you just have to get a little closer, um, and that's all you need to do. Um, but uh, so maybe maybe the reach of it was was a little much, but it didn't change that much from what it used to be. It's just that like people started playing him more, 
so we actually had more representation and they have more data to go off of and uh, and I, I want to say just you know people cried but uh, but really like it's not fun just facing like camping tunneling race all day who can you know do terrible things to you but people he could do this like he's always been able to do this since his changes back in the day so you could kick gens um, and you could break pallets while you were stealth um, you know you can still stun him out of I stun him for a long time with the flashlight um, he still has to play by the rules of every m1 killer in the game um, it's just that now he, he can get around the map pretty decent put some decent pressure and juggle survivors enough to really start getting people down and um, making them make hard decisions like am I gonna heal or am I gonna finish this gen um, am I gonna heal or am I gonna you know go in for the save and uh, and he can really punish that so um, I mean, these are fine. Like, I mean, I would still play the Wraith. Like, there's there's, there's nothing bad there. So uh, we're going to take that one to a close so we can actually make some chapters out of this bad boy because it's going to take a little while. And then we're going to move on to the hillbilly. So we'll be right back, my friend. All right, my friends, the hillbilly. Add-on, death engravings, added effect. It decreases heat generator while charging by 14%. That's fine. Um, and once again, uh, these first three, uh, Doom Engravings, <coughs> Death Engraving, Doom Engravings, um, both added this fact, decreases heat generated while charging by 14%. And the reason here, um, you can see, is the engraving add-ons are very popular with players, but the increased charge time means he generates significantly more heat for full charge with these add-ons. So they like doubly punished him, right? You got, you got, you got some speed out of it, right? Um, but uh, but it took longer to charge, and then it built up more heat, and then you overheated quicker, and so like it was like just getting like slapped around a little bit, and so changing those is good. Like I don't I don't think there's anything wrong in there, um, and and it evens out like his overheat mechanic that they slapped on him to do whatever like he could be impressive like i'm not i'm not saying oh you know what billy was the worst killer in the game billy was always a very strong killer it used to be billy and nurse um nurse has never changed but uh even even with her changes like but uh but billy honestly is still a strong killer i think just a lot of people backed off him. you'd see a lot of billies back in the day and um and now not so much like i just saw the first one i've seen um not that i play thousands of survivor games but uh first one that i've seen in a while um, and, uh, and, and, and he was good. Like, I mean, he was very efficient, got stuff done, and killed us all. Uh, because that's what Billy does. He was very good with his chainsaw. He's got good map pressure and the ability to one-hit down anybody. Um, you know, given, given the appropriate room and the appropriate area to maneuver in, uh, is dangerous. It always has been. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mother's Helpers. Charge speed bonuses after being stunned increased 18. It was 12. I mean, that's kind of nice, like, if, but if you're going to run around and, and sort of play that, like, I'm going to eat every pallet in my face kind of gameplay, like, you've got to prepare for it um, and, and have the right, um, you got to have the right perks. And, and honestly, like, like nowadays, like, like good teams, like, if they, if you just follow around and just eat pallets from somebody because you think you're going to make some dead spaces, there's three gens gone. Like it's it's no joke. Like, or you're already two gems behind, and uh, because you thought, oh, I'm tough, I'm gonna do this and maybe get you know something. No, um, you, you still got to be smart. You still got to break chases, um, and uh, and keep an eye on what you're doing. So these could be helpful if you get that stun. Um, you know, this paired with um, enduring um, might help you get some downs you might not normally. Uh, so I mean, that's fine. Um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, maybe I give it a try. Um, add on tune carburetor charge speed bonus increased to 25 was 20 so it's just speeding up your your, your charge speed which is helpful sometimes um, you know if you get the hang of it you just have to get the timings down if you like it faster that's fine um, and sometimes it's nice because you just only have X amount of space to work in it's nice to be able to 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 get that last second um, chainsaw right before someone gets to a window or something and that's gonna help you a little bit in that direction um, the reworked add-on, Black Reese, increases chainsaw charge speed by 18 for 30 seconds after being blinded. Um, so that's nice, 
um, especially if you're like once again this is kind of focusing around like you know some palette gameplay um, I don't think you're necessarily going to get a lot of mileage over it someone you know blinds you while you are picking up a survivor but you also might so um, not bad like it's it's not a not not a bad thing to run, but I think that you probably have some better things to do with your add-ons, honestly. Where you, you know, whether it's whether it's charge speed or, or whatever. Like I mean, I think there are probably better things, but that might be worth a go. I mean, uh, reworked add-on pickhouse gloves increases action speed by 20 when breaking pallets or walls or damaging generators while overheated. Um, der decreases duration of pallets on this by 50%. So I'm pretty sure that this is this is an ultra rare um, that they're adding in um, I think I think that this is okay but it, it's once again like we're, we're, we're coming back to like pallet and wall gameplay um, where if you're not careful like the game will get away from you if you just focus on breaking every pallet and every breakable wall in the game like it just goes too fast and it's uh, you need to be on top of people and that's where Billy's strength is is getting around the map and breaking shit and and, and putting map pressure on people getting them down quickly and uh you know making them scramble like this is that's what billy does well um and so like i mean this helps if you if you actually get overheated but then you're only getting that bonus if you actually get to the point where you're overheated and you don't necessarily want to be there all the time um but decreases duration of palace suns by 50 percent. i mean that's nice too i mean you can just pop up and you might still get a good hit in um, especially on, you know, like unsafe pallets and stuff, short loops. Um, but, uh, but developers notes, uh, the engraving add-ons are very popular players, but the increased charge time means he generates heat, um, significantly more heat for a full charge with these add-ons than without. The heat reduction modifier has been added to keep the amount of heat produced for one full charge constant. And uh, we've also improved some underperforming add-ons to make them more enticing. Um, and I, and I think they did that. Honestly, like, um, like I, I really feel like I should probably play more Billy. Like he's he's a, he's a good strong killer to get better at. But I always avoided him back in the day because everybody played Billy, and I didn't want to be that guy. And um, so there, uh, that's 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 the hill Billy. Um, it's fine. The changes are great. Um, um, the the add-ons are, are nothing to write home about, but they're you know obviously better than some of the stuff he has. Like there's little once again there there's a lot you just don't use, and that goes for pretty much every killer in the game. Um, but it's okay. So the nurse add-on torn bookmark removed line of sight restriction added effect increases blink charge blink recharge time by fifty percent. Um, like this one was interesting. I think what this gave you the extra blink and but you you had to follow walls like you couldn't blink through stuff. And so I don't think a lot of people used it outside of memes and whatever. Um, increases the blink recharge time by 50%. I, I don't know how many people would actually use it. Like, they might, but I, I don't think so. Like, so really, there's... I don't think there's a lot to talk about here. Like, I don't think that um, most people, um, even very, very good nurse players, will probably bother using this. Um, it would, And they didn't bother to use it before. So there's really not a lot to talk about there outside of, hey, thanks. Um, the shape added uh, add on memorial flower rarity decreased to common was uncommon. Um, vanity mirror removes speed penalty, um, and uh, Judas tombstone speed penalty now only applies to evil within. The rarity changes to memorial flower brings the shape in line with all of our other killers in time in terms of add-on rarity distribution. Additionally, we have removed the movement speed penalties that prevented two add-ons from realistically enabling their intended play styles. Our condolences to players who use these add-ons for comedic purposes, um, like Burger King Myers and stuff like that. Like, you would have to be super slow the whole game into, like, you know make your 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 game play off like so you would like when you would play stuff like i mean not, i don't know many people using the vanity mirror but like a scratch mirror is the game like that's that's the good stuff um but vanity mirror i mean you can use it but now uh it doesn't have a speed penalty so it's at least a little more attractive to use as an m1 killer any sort of speed killer <laughs> Any sort of speed penalty sucks. Like, all he does is run around and stab people. He doesn't have traps, he doesn't teleport, but he can save up enough stock and then he can start, you know, hitting people for a time and then they go down. Um, 
uh, and you can kind of do it you know you can you can use it when you want to you it's not something that just like comes up and 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 activates and then you have to figure out what to do with it or you lose it um, sometimes if you stock too much that happens but you know you can you can pop it when you needed it like you know at a crucial point or a basement save or whatever and you can really really wreck people uh, just the rest of the time you're getting run around everything and breaking balance and and really have to rely on those big plays where you snowball with your tier three so I mean these are fine like these are fine changes to Michael does that does that fix the fact that Michael Michael's fallen behind a lot in this game like um, and, and I would say the trapper you know people that are there there's some of the basic killers that that uh, that didn't age super well i mean i think you can still play and have fun with michael but once again you're not gonna you're not gonna be like just completely kicking the crap out of sweat squads um with mike myers like unless they're being super cocky and um and then they deserved it <laughs> but uh um these are okay but um but michael i think is probably probably long past due for some sort of rework or adjustment or or buff like i i don't think uh i can't imagine he's overperforming um is he the worst killer in the game no not at all but um but he's just always been michael and, and sometimes you'll have some pretty fun games with it and sometimes eh, not so much buddy is the only killer in the game where his add-ons so greatly change his his gameplay um, whether you are Spoopy Myers sneaking around, um, you know, with your X-ray vision, or you know whether you are going for infinite tier three Myers, uh, where you know you take a long time to stock up, and then you can just run around and your tier three never runs out, and you just whack people down. Super fun, but it was a lot of work to do, and you had to pull it off before the game ended. Um, so it was tricky, it was a gamble, and then things like Tombstone, like where you can mori someone from you know like just the chase like uh once you're in tier three you just got to get close enough behind them and just tap and you would mori them on the spot super super fun um but but kind of but you also lost a lot of points doing it because sometimes you'd end up killing people and like they not even had a hook so you missed out on some blood points and stuff but fun so like lots of different ways to play him um just because of his add-ons and i wish i wish i wish that they would put more of that into other killers instead of the lazy like slightly considerably moderately things that we just constantly get something you know goes faster or something gets set faster or whatever like they're 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 not really flavorful you know they just are you know improving on mechanics that are in the game not not doing anything different with them so um, then we got the hag uh thank god the waterlogged shoe uh increased its speed bonus uh, to 4.5 was two percent <sighs> like the waterlogged shoe is one of the hag's worst performing add-ons so we're giving it a buff to make it more viable it will now make the hag move at regular killer speed uh, the, I think the problem is, if I remember correctly, because, okay, I am I am a grinny hag main. Um, I have never used this add-on once in almost, almost five years. And I am pretty sure, because there are a couple that are like this, I believe. I think what it does is it removes your ability to teleport. Um, or maybe not. You know what? Let's actually Google this one just to be sure. So I actually look. Um, just to make sure. Waterlogged shoe. Let's do it. Uh, a child shoe long lost the box water. Increase the hag's move speed to 4.6 for the entire trial. While inside the trigger range of the phantasm trap, uh, survivors suffer from the hindered status effect removes the the hag's ability to teleport to trigger phantasm traps so these traps work like like slows like uh like uh freddy's blood pools but anything that i mean it does speed her up right but um but then you're just kind of like a regular killer and your your, your power is is more like immovable trappers that that slows down people a little bit I literally have never used it like the power in the hag is the teleporting and um, surprising people catching them off guard you know pulling people off gens from time to time um, things like that 
and um, using them as like a, a, a Freddy Bloodpool um, without having the rest of Freddy's kit. Like it's just it's not really worthwhile. Um, it does change how she plays, but not not in a good way. So um, really nothing there. Um, at least no nerfs for Granny because um, life is getting tough out there. So the pig, lots of changes, um, um, add-ons, um, a plenty, and so we're gonna try to bam through these, and then we'll uh, make another chapter. Um, pig add-on bag of gears increase reverse bear trap setting time speed bonus to fifty percent was twenty percent. Uh, I mean that's fine. Like sometimes it saves a little time. It doesn't take all that much time um, to uh, to put on a trap, but. And, I, and I, there's better add-ons to run. So, I mean, that's that's fine. Nothing wrong with it. Creative Gears. Decreased Jigsaw Search penalty to 33. Was at 43%. Um, like, using the Creative Gears was, uh, you know, one of the decent ways where you could occasionally get the head pop in the game. Where, where the trap would actually last long enough. Um, if you harassed that person and at least maybe knocked him down once or twice. Um, where you might get a head pop. Because if they missed, um, uh, if they missed a skill check at at the box, like they got a decent chunk of a penalty of aggression and had to keep going, right? Like so, um, I mean it's whatever, I guess. Um, that's 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 kind of a nerf to her head traps um, and uh, the ability to occasionally get a head pop, but. Um, it's it's whatever so um rule set into decreased rarity to rare was ultra rare uh honestly i can't even remember what that one does i it's i've never used it i've never used it um uh, so no change there for me amanda's letter jigsaw's box reduction removed aura reveal range increased to 16 meters this is actually a very good thing um the uh, so so like the box reduction made it so like they they would get it done in a, a fewer amount of boxes and 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 get that trap off their head and uh, the aura reveal range was 12 meters 16 is is fine especially since she's not you know like you know the wraith or somebody where she's gonna uh, she needs that help like her her kilt her kit is based on stealth and being able to sneak up on people is is huge. But you also move slower while you're sneaking around. You gotta take that in consideration. You cannot just stealth around a map all day and then expect that you are going to beat the team that's just working on gens. Because they got nothing else to do, because you're busy crouching around. Um, so this is fine. Like Amanda's letter was a, a great add-on for her before, and it, it's even better now. And so that's that's great. Uh, John's medical file increases crouch move speed by six. I mean that's great, reworked, um, but I mean, it, it, it'd be nice, but once again, I think that there are better add-ons to run on her. Uh, razor wires. Uh, failing a jigsaw box skill check while uninjured will injure the survivor. That's interesting. Um, that's actually decent um, to add an injury to it, but half the time, they're probably injured already. Um, they've, they've just come off the hook. Um, better better squads and stuff will, will heal that person right off the hook, so you can't just walk up to them and knock them down again. Uh, but... But on average, those people are not missing skill checks and are probably not going to get injured from them. So uh, it, it sounds neat, but in, in, in real life, it, you're not going to see a lot of use out of it because people aren't missing those skill checks. Um, let's see. Uh, workshop Grease increases ambush attack charge speed by 50, decreases ambush attack miss cooldown by 25, increases rarity to uncommon was common that's great honestly like like uh, like the, the thing is is that you can only do so much with the traps like you can only make them so good or so bad like as far as the developer goes like um, she's already got you know stealth and um, it's very very helpful in this game and um, like but her power power is is this ambush that it takes a while to charge up and a lot of times you play against bitter survivors um, you know, like if you're do, trying to do it a loop and catch them off guard with your charge, um, they just run away because it takes a little bit to actually charge up. Not all that long, but enough. And so, so that that could very well be helpful. Um, nothing wrong with that. And ambush attack miss cooldown by 
25%. So it's gonna take you less time to recover when you miss it. So it, it's gonna maybe give you the option to try to use it more to catch people off guard. So that's that's a that's a that's a nice little buff, nice little quality of life. Um, I mean, it's not to her base kit, but it is an add-on. And so that's one you might want to use. Uh, reworked add-on, last will. Increases ambush attack movement speed by six. Increased time to charge and book attack by 66. Um, so a little speed up, but it also takes longer to charge up. So like a smart survivor is just gonna run the other way at a loop that you can actually use this at. Not great. Um, other one, much better. Um, I mean, you get, you get a little bit of a movement speed buff, but it takes you longer to charge it and people are just gonna run away. So, um, reworked add-on, Jigsaw's annotated plan, increase available reverse bear traps by one, increases reverse bear trap death timer by 10 seconds. Uh, whenever a generator is completed, 10 seconds is removed from the death timer of all active reverse bear traps. This one is sort of interesting, like it starts off bad. Um, <laughs> I mean, you get an extra bear trap, but then immediately, you know, you can't have anything good and they have to increase the death timer by 10 seconds. And, and that can mean life or death. Like the times that I have died to a pig's um, uh, a head pop um, uh, from the bear trap on my skull um, has been a couple times, but it's always kind of been down to maybe that last 15, 20 seconds. And uh, so like that extra 10 seconds, is not a small deal. But the longer they have it on, like, I mean, if, if they, you get someone at the beginning of the game and, and you get it on before the first gens pop and then two gens pop, like, they literally are killing him. Not just activating it, but they are knocking off the, the, the cooldown. Well, not the cooldown, but the timer of the trap itself. And so that one's kind of interesting. Like, um, like that might be worth using and seeing how it plays out, depending on what other add-ons you're running. Uh, so, so kind of a buff, like, uh, like decent, but the, the chances that they're going to have it on past those maybe first two gens, and that's if you get someone down, and that's if you get a trap on them, that's, uh, you know, like, you know, if you get them on in, before, like, any, any gens have popped, um, you know, then, then this add-on is gonna be pretty hard on that first person, but otherwise, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's not terrible, but, I, I, I don't see it be as something that I would want to run all the time. Um, rework that on uh, Jigsaw Sketch. Increases available reverse bear traps by one when a survivor with a reverse bear trap is working on a generator. That generator's aura is revealed to you. That's actually pretty decent. You would be surprised. Um, like once you, once, you, once you get to a certain level of play, like how many survivors who do not have their head trap activated yet are, are so completely unafraid of it that they will go ahead and sit down and work on a gen if one has not popped and activated their trap. So they're not wasting time. It is ridiculously efficient of them to do. So if, if this lights up that, that thing, now all of a sudden, like you can go, you know, drop that person again, and then, you know, a gen is gonna pop and then they're gonna have, you know, their hands full. It's gonna take them out of the game until they get that off. So that's not bad at all. Um, I don't, um, I don't know. It doesn't say the, it doesn't say the rarity, but I would, I would assume it's at least a very rare, if not an ultra rare. But, um, yeah. But otherwise, uh, rework and videotape. Survivors begin the trial with reverse bear traps installed. Rarity increased to ultra rare was uncommon. So you're actually gonna have a pile of these um, if you played a lot of pig. Um, and that's kind of nice, but here's the thing, like this is this is kind of how I see it playing out. Like I do not believe that they are going to give you, and I and I haven't seen. I, I should watch, but um, um, there there's going to be some downside somewhere. Uh, they're all going to start with traps, but none of them are going to be active, and most of the time you're probably going to lose two people. Um, are are going to get them off fairly quickly because of the RNG. The RNG is what kills the pig. You know, it's not that she's a bad killer, it's just that some games, like, people are, like, throwing their, their head traps off, um, you know, first or second box tops. And, you know, you turn around and you're like, hey, I just put that trap on that person's head and now it's gone. Like, that's, that's some days how it feels how to play the pig. There's, there's a lot of RNG involved. And, um, and not that you're supposed to like put it on their head and then you know a minute and a half later they're going to automatically die. Obviously that's not the case. Like that would be ridiculously broken. 
but they 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 are a built-in stall to her kit that helps her because she doesn't once again have map pressure i mean she can be sneaky but she's got to be a little slower to do it and if she's just running around she's just like angry machete man just I'm gonna stab you, and she's, you know, pallets, windows, everything else. Like you're, you're subject to it. Like it's literally built to keep survivors away from you, and uh, there's not much you can do about it. So, so this is fine, and it's gonna give you some stall at the beginning of the game. But I don't think it's gonna be as broken as people think it's gonna be because it's, they're not activated. There's no pressure. Like they can stealth around the map and use boxes, and maybe you can start patrolling a couple at the beginning of the game. And, and get one chase and maybe get a hook while everybody else gets their boxes off. I think it's, I mean, it's a fun thought, but it also I do not know if it leaves you with any traps um, for the actual game because that might be a little overpowered. Like, you stalled them at the beginning of the game, everybody started with a bear trap, which is cool visually and, and uh, you know, thematically to the killer. Um, but then having four more traps to keep slapping on people during the game, I think, would probably be a little broken. Um, and, and a little annoying, too. I mean, not that I'm against annoying survivors, but really, like, I think that would be too much. And I think that it's probably you sacrifice the ability to, to have a full assortment of traps with you um, to be able to start out the game with that extra added kind of pressure and stall. So, I mean, stall is not bad. Stall is king, but... Um, yeah. So honestly, like uh, all in all, like I mean, they didn't really change her kit, um, you know. But the, but they were we worked some add-ons to give her some love um, and play around with the bear trap timers and and play around with your ambush, and and that's and that's helpful. That's all fine. Like all of this is pretty much outside of you know a couple add-ons like a, a straight buff to the pig. Is that going to put her to the top of the charts? No. Um, but honestly, I, I there are, there are not a lot of times where I have terrible games with the pig. And, um, and I'm surprised I don't play her more, but, uh, but she also really, I mean, like if a team is, doesn't want you to touch them, like you are probably not going to touch them with the pig. Um, but, uh, nonetheless, uh, decent, decent, uh, makes it some more interesting add on plays and, and, and just kind of overall like a buff to the pig. Um, but we will, uh stop before we hit the spirit ladies and gentlemen because we'll go off on that for a little bit but good stuff for the pig um nothing to complain about there really um maybe not enough but uh, she could use more but it it could be worse all right so the spirit the spirit is finally getting nerfed um I am, uh, I'm gonna read the developer's notes first and then we will go up to the changes. Uh, the Spirit's phase walking mind games have evolved into something of a Kobayashi Maru. By adding some audio cues, it should give Sharp Survivor a chance to figure out what she's doing and react accordingly. Along with this, replace some more for problematic and boring add-ons with new ones that should provide some more varied options for potential playstyles. Nothing wrong with, you know, varied playstyles and stuff. Um, uh, and, and we're going to read through this and then we're going to give you our quick rundown. Um, I, I've never played a lot of Spirit and it's the same thing like where, where I never played a lot of Billy or I never jumped on the nurse um, early in my career because that's just everybody played them. Like every game people would face would be like a nurse or be a Spirit or be a Billy, you know, and, and now it's it, it was nurse and Spirit and, and, and Blight, you know, or whoever was the flavor of the moment, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, let's just we'll we'll start. We'll we'll, we'll walk through. Uh, while face walking survivors within 24 meters of the spirit, not the husk, um, hear a directional audio cue that gains volume with proximity. So now you can hear the spirit, like not 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 just like I I had there was an area of sound. Now you can hear a directional sound cue. Um, to when it matters most to the spirit uh, when she is trying to outfox you at a dropped pallet or at a loop um, now you're going to know where to go and and, and 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 obviously like like lesser skilled survivors you know or newer players of the game this isn't going to matter much uh, this isn't going to matter much when you're playing the spirit at all um, but that that's not the problem 
but like it's the problem that that we we run into is that you have these these squads of survivors that are very 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 hard to even touch with most of the killers in the game and and to really go against those people you needed to be a good spirit you needed to be a good nurse um, a good blight um, you know back then a good billy and probably still a good billy but people who had you know good map pressure and had real potential to down people quickly or were very strong at loops like to counter all of the tools that survivors have what they're doing to the spirit like is just dumb like they're they're like it's it's i i once again i do not play her um i, I rarely play her i I'm, I'm competent with her like i'm competent with all the killers in the game but that's not helping them <laughs> a lot right now um uh but 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 the but the core issue here they also had talked about adding um like little dust patches like where where she was walking to give visual cues as well uh, it does not look like that has made the ptr but um but that was first uh, on top of the directional sound um it was you were going to get visual and audio cues um what will happen you know versus like like real good teams is you know what it might take them you know uh some games against the spirit and like competitive teams will just go into scrims and play against her until they've got it figured out and and really get you know like this directional sound it's not only directional but it's intent the intensity the volume goes up as well so you know if she's close you know if she's far away she you know if she's facing you um, you can play that a little bit, I would imagine, but trying to do mind games while you're phase walking instead of just like doing the things that you should be doing, I think are really going to complicate her. And I think most people that are, are out there like running around as crazy wild spirit maids are, are, are probably very angry right now. And, um, and, and I, I think they have a right to be. Like, this was why Spirit was good. Like, the rest of it, her 110 mood speed and the fact that she can go kind of invisible and play a little mind game once in a while, like, and be like, ha, I actually didn't phase. Um, like, this was her strength, and her strength is at loops and, uh, and at pallets, and, and this is really, really gonna hurt her at the high end. And, and we don't have a lot as killers at the high end. Like, you can't walk in with the pig and expect that you're going to walk out, you know, with a 3K or a 2K. Like, you, you're gonna get stomped, or the clown, or even my dear love, the hag. Like, we've, we've seen in the last couple weeks, like, I am I'm on a winless streak with the hag of about four or five games. And, and each time I have gotten ridiculously wrecked. Um, good good players know how to counter the hag. She's easily countered. She's allergic to flashlights. Um, and um, and there the timing is, it feels a little off. Like the traps do not feel as responsive as they were. It feels like there's some lag there because most of the time when I'm instantly teleporting because I'm mashing on that button, um, the people are already gone. And uh, or at least far enough away so. You know, like I either need to hold my swing and and not take the cooldown penalty, um, or just run. And you know that it's a case by case thing, but whatever. Like that's a different thing. What they've done here with the spirit is is, is take out the thing that made it very difficult, even for very good survivors. Um, to go against was the fact that she was unpredictable. Like you, you it was you had to guess. And, and, and that's what made her dangerous. None of the rest of her kit makes her dangerous, except for that. And, and this will be kind of wrecked at the high end of play. Um, I'm not even at the high end of play, and I'm, it, it's still brutal. Um, like, the high end of play, like, Spirit will just never play up there again. The low end of play, it doesn't matter. Like, like you will still down survivors just fine. You will still, you know, be sneaky deaky, and you will still probably get maybe not as many gen pulls but you you still will probably get a gen pull from time to time you know like but those were the things that was what made the spirit the spirit and and now it's it's gonna be done like and, and i uh i the, as a killer in dead by daylight things are terrible right now i've never seen them this bad and and now we're getting spirit nerfs and uh death slinger nerfs are on the way as well uh, we'll get to that too but um just in general um 
like I, I I get for the average player, the average casual person, like playing against a halfway decent spirit, like while you're logging in for your couple games a week, doesn't always feel great. But you know what? There needs to be killers like that in the game, because there are killers like clown in the game. There are killers like the legion in the game. There are killers like the plague in the game. Um, even the pig, you know, like is is has always been a decent killer for me. But I also realize that she's her limitations and the RNG and her traps kind of make her eh, if you love her you love her and god bless you but um but 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 you know big giant sweat squads are just gonna just make your day um terrible and that's why people play the spirit that's why people you know picked up the blight and dusted him off and they're like hey you know what this actually is really good he's got great map pressure and he bounces around the place he can do some interesting things that other killers can't um, you know, and even the nurse asked after her changes, they're like, you know what? She's still the nurse Still and now she is now the official reigning best Killer in the game like uh, you know, the spirit is no longer in that maybe depending on the add-ons and depending on the player no, That's that's done absolutely done and um, And that feels bad as a killer even someone who doesn't play the spirit But uh, we'll move on um, add on Jupiter Bonsai added effect increases passive phasing duration um, by 50%. Um, uh, like, like the passive phasing is okay, like, but it's it's really just you don't actually move, you know, phase back and forth and make it harder to track you. You're still here, and I mean it's it's neat. It looks cool. Um, and and may be able to throw some survivors off a little bit, like with your movement. Um, but otherwise not that great. Um, and so it got a bit of a buff. Ah, uh, rework. Uh, dried cherry blossoms. Survivors trigger killer instinct when they come within four meters of the spirit while she is phasing. Scratch marks are no longer visible while using Yamko as haunting. Um, so you lose scratch marks, but you, you, you get the killer instinct, which is kind of, it helps you like aim, I guess, but if you're playing the spirit, you're already good at like listening and uncloaking. Like you don't necessarily need that and then lose the scratch marks because you need the scratch marks to follow, right? So I don't, I don't know if that's a great trade-off um, or makes it any more interesting to play her. Um, uh, reworked, uh, Wasajatsu Saya. Uh, during Yamakoa's haunting, use the active ability button to return the husk and end the haunting. Oh, uh, that's okay. Like that's an interesting, interesting play. Like Nurse has one that's similar. Basically, they're just copy and pasting it. You can blink and then you can blink back to the exact location that you were. Um, not terribly inventive, but can be handy. Like if you kick a gen and then phase away, and you know there's a couple people there and they're you know rabid, rabid gen dogs, um, and then you just you know phase back to it um sometimes you will get some nice hits out of that um but otherwise really just a cop and paste uh copy and paste from uh existing nurse add-on and so yeah but might be useful might have fun with it new add-on mother's glasses uh survivors trigger uh killer instinct when they come within two meters of the husk scratch marks are no longer visible while using yamako is haunting once again like if anybody's coming by my husk i mean i do i i want to know yeah i mean that's fine um but but losing the scratch marks i don't know if it's worth the trade-off for that little bit like um so i'm pretty ambivalent about that uh new add-on uchua uh, instantly recharge Yamakoa's haunting when stunned by a pallet. I'm not against that. Not against that at all. Like you could be, you know, you just found someone by phasing and, uh, you know, just about had him at a pallet and, um, you know, you, you don't have the juice to phase and uh, you get pallet stunned and it immediately fills it up. That's actually a good add-on. I mean, I'm not, you know, recommending, hey, you should constantly go out and take pallet stuns, but, um, that one's not bad. Um, new add on it, Cinco Hanabi. Uh, when Yamako's haunting ends, the spirit husk explodes and any vaults within four meters are blocked for five seconds. Um, like this is not, not terrible, but really most of the time, I don't think you're strategically positioning um, where you took off from with the husk. 
um, to block stuff. Now you could use this with the other one that takes you back to your husk. So you can, you know, you phase and then when you can recall it and go back to the place. So then your husk would explode and if those people are in this loop around the gen, it would block the windows and maybe the pallet. Um, so, I mean, you could do that, but honestly, I feel like you're wasting a lot of time to potentially maybe get a hit on somebody that might not be there. Uh, but but that I, that's what they're trying to do there. Um, but otherwise, four meters is not, not a great long distance. You might block a window. You might, on some loops, you might block a window and a pallet, you know, like maybe at the shack. <sighs> but maybe not. Like, I don't know if it would reach both unless you were just in the right spot. Um... Okay, uh, let's see. If you're in the phasing sound is heard by all survivors, that's fine. Like that's uh, like a, trying to confuse them and keep them on their toes um, could potentially bring them off gens or make them bed down so they're not on an objective, they're not doing something. But once they know it's there, like, you know, they sort of ease into it and just like, well, either she's coming or she's not. But that one's just fine. Um, Kinesugi tea, tea cup. Uh, instantly recharge ammo close haunting after breaking a pallet or a wall. Uh, once again, using using one of those two to instantly recharge your haunting, like that's pretty good. Like, um, like I I think that um, that those are real decent, and um, uh, I don't know if that that you know solves the bigger picture, but it's this more of a bigger demo daylight picture. Like, um, I mean, the spirit is still gonna be playable. Like, I mean, you're still gonna, I mean, if you're just a casual player and you really enjoy playing the spirit, please do. Like, like this really, what it does is it, it really hurts uh, her her high level play. And, and, and most of us, even myself included, are never gonna be there. Like, it, so, like, it, it just, it's, it's, it's the principle and it's the fact that like, like another another giant has fallen like and, and uh and even if i never played the spirit a lot um i still knew what she could do and um now i'm glad i didn't sink you know 1500 hours into her to only get her nerfed this is why i don't play the super strong killers like <laughs> um because they, they they get hurt and then all of a sudden you're left holding the bag and you're like very frustrated and then you leave the game uh <laughs> That's pretty much what happens. But following ads have been removed, bloody hair brooch, dirty bawaki, cat swimming talisman, prayer beads. Prayer beads has been removed, but that was also nerfed as well. So, and father's glass has been taken off too. Uh, father, father's glasses, I believe, is when you saw the blood stains on the ground um, uh, while you were phased. So, I'm not super sure about that. Um, new terror radius music, she gets her own music, great. Um, but but really this is this is this is kind of like you know they've been going down the list for the longest time you know they never nerfed the nurse then they finally nerfed the nurse they never nerfed Billy then they nerfed Billy I think Billy came first actually um, they've gone through iridescent hatchets was annoying um, but they nerfed that um, you know stuff that was you know dangerous or fun or good for killers is just getting smacked in the face and and MMR is is, is getting real tough on a body. And so when they go ahead and, and nerf, um, you know, one of one of our few, like, real, like, it's a strong killer. If you take the time and get good at the spirit, you, you will do some damage. And, um, but, but that's, I mean, it's okay for, for casual, and, and, and if you still love the spirit, you still want to play her, and you don't care about, like, you know, getting beat a lot more often by good teams, um, like it's fine, it is. But but it just it, it feels bad, and it, it just adds to the direction that the game is heading in right now. Um, that's I'm gonna wrap that up for that one, and we are going to pause uh, and move into the next section with the plague and see what else we can get through. All right, see you soon. All right, my friends, let's hop into the plague. Um, obviously a lot of things going on here much like the pig a lot of add-on reworks and um, a couple slight changes to her power um, if the power button is released early when you're charging up your vomits uh, vile purge will continue charging to the minimum threshold instead of canceling entering cooldown I always felt bad because not only did it slow you down but sometimes it wasn't even your fault you know like you would charge it up and it would quit and then you would you know 
slow down because it stopped charging instead of you know filling up and actually getting to vomit on somebody so so that's fine that was a good quality of life thing honestly don't know how easy a fix it was but probably should have been done a long time ago uh, excuse me um, Vile Purge cooldown move speed increased from 2.3 meters per second to 3.6 meters per second. So that's the thing. Like after Vile Purge, and 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 it wasn't always easy to notice, um, uh, but but it really was slow when you looked at it. You could you could play certain games, and you know someone's running away from you, and uh, you know you just got a little vomit on them. Like they would really gain a lot of distance without even being injured, and it's because you slowed down to literally half of your speed, and. Um, and so they've they've buffed that a little bit. That's gonna that's gonna help it loops a little bit and stuff. Um, where you're where you're gonna feel that, um, and and a fine quality of life change. Nothing game breaking, but a, a simple quality of life change that probably should have been put in the game some time ago. Good job. Um, base object confession time increased to forty seconds. It was thirty five seconds. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter at all like i mean the, the actually infecting things is 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 okay um you will like if you're playing if you're playing like you know kind of more casually and you're playing against more casual survivors like people will you know at least early on maybe avoid those gens so they don't have to get sick and because when you get sick you make a lot of noise but you could also go easily purge it out of the thing but then that gives her you know her corrupted purge and, um, and and sometimes that can lead to bad things like the plague the plague can do some neat things it's just that there's just some things that that don't go well like if you if, if people are good at staying away if they are running 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 um, long before you get there you know after they hear your terror radius you're, you're gonna have a very bad day um, like you're really relying on people to make mistakes or, or using Tinkerer or or you know whatever you're gonna do monitor and views to get close things like that um, to where you can actually knock these people down because you're gonna get them all sick um, it just depends on how often they heal and when they heal like really good survivors will not heal until the very end of the game when they know they've won and then it basically resets everything and they've already got you know one door 99 and then they're gone like that's that's how the average plague game goes um, i've seen people play plague very very well um at higher levels um uh, one of my favorite streamers fun goose had like a i think it was a 376 game win streak like it's funny to watch like odd star run other people like i got 50 kills no no like go watch fun goose's channel i mean we're talking like a couple hundred games you know on average killers um plague who's not top of the shelf i think it was 376 games straight where he 4k'd with the plague like i mean he would slug the crap out of everybody mind you but he still did it on the plague amazing to watch um so the plague has potential but but still one of the weaker um killers in the game not i mean there's there's potential there but but really more against inexperienced survivors like good survivors just will they will, they will take you out to the woodshed and they will give you a whooping. Um, so interacting with infected objects generates two times more sickness over time than interacting with non-infected objects. <sighs> Once again, um, the infection is 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 the one of the core parts of her kit, but it, it's it's so easily cleansed. Or if you are very good, avoid any contact with the plague and you could be sick all game and it does not matter. Um, you know, or allow, you know, people to get hook traded out, you know, like, I mean, you've got 13 hooks to, to, to spend, um, before everybody's dead. So, so allowing someone to get on a hook now and again, because they are, they are, you know, the broken status, um, it's, 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 it's. I mean, I, I, I would like it if my, if my actual vomit on them worked faster while I was spraying it at them so I could use it more actively in a chase outside of just having to get like right behind them and 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 really get a good full stream on them or you know happen to catch someone in a corner and body block them and then just coat them in vomit and then knock them down those last two things don't happen terribly often and and the other one it, it it's hard with all of the the terrain in the game and all of the things that are are built in to allow survivors to not just have to run out in the open and and that can be trees and rocks and things like that will screw up 
you know, uh, getting a good uh, down on them. And you don't want to just sit around and keep puking on them until they're finally, um, until they're finally sick, because it takes a while. Like, because a lot of times you're getting very little on them. You're not just going to be like, you know, standing behind someone and vomiting on them constantly. It's just not going to happen. So that's why the, the increase uh, to the infection and the eventual broken status just doesn't impress me a lot. Like it's just, um, it's easy to get rid of if you don't want it. And, um, and honestly, you can, you can wait out her corrupt purge, you know, if you're smart, you know, and just hide. Um, time to cleanse of a fountain increased to eight seconds was six seconds, um, two seconds. Sometimes I've had games where that would make the difference from, you know, knocking them down or then healing completely. But um, nothing to write home about, but a buff nonetheless. Add on limestone seal, objection, object infection bonus increased to 20 seconds, um, was 5 seconds. So things are going to stay infected longer. Um, you can do this. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying don't infect gens, you know, but, um, uh, but the problem is if you spend too much time doing that, it's like setting up traps. It's the same thing. If you spend too much time setting up traps, um, you're, by the time you see your first survivor, two gens are going to be gone. Um, so casually doing it while you're moving around is the ideal way. Or for it to be, ca you know, it, it, it happened to get on a window that they happened to go through, like, and it wouldn't have been there if it wasn't on there an extra 20 seconds. I mean, stuff like that's fine. It's just that the infection, um, you know, is, is, is both her lifeblood and, and the weakness of her kit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Limestone seal object. Uh, no, emetic potion. Um, increased vile purge effectiveness bonus to 30% was 25%. So you do get a bit of a bonus there and a little bit of a buff. So once again, a buff. That's what you want. Like if you like to to really be able to seal the deal on a chase, like getting them infected faster with the vomit is is a good way to go about it. Um, to worry less about infection time on objects and worry more about getting a good shot with your vile purge to get them injured so you can drop them down. So that one's fine. Um, Hematite seal. Object infection bonus increased to 30 seconds was 10 seconds. Once again, not a big deal. Um, uh, infected... Uh, Ash and Apple. Removed object infection duration modifier added effect. Increases the number of pools of devotion in the trial by one. This can be good and it also can be bad. Um, it means there are more pools to cleanse from, which means survivors have more options. Um, but if you play in a way where like you, you leave, you know, you store up your fountains until you really want to go on a rampage or things are going your way, um, like that you know, sometimes, you know, getting over to that that last fountain might be problematic for a survivor or whatever. But once once they have filled up all of the uh, the pools and cleansed them, like it resets. Like I think this is a big problem. Like this should be honestly be something like if you decide to block them out of cleansing, well by the time that they have, you know, taken out all the pools in the game like I think you know it's it's fairly late in the game right and um, if you haven't actively been using it and are saving up for kind of some weird end game thing where everybody's broken and can't heal like that uh, that's fine uh, but once again um, it's uh, it works against her real hard in the end and doesn't uh, um, doesn't give her a ton of return uh, unfortunately like uh, so uh, so that's extra, extra pool. Um, it's fine. Uh, rubbing oil, reduce vile purges, vile purges charge speed bonus to 50%. Was 100%. You used to be able to use this and charge up very fast. Um, and, and that was very, very helpful because, you know, like in loops and stuff, it's not always good. To, it's not always easy to breathe it in and have that cool down uh, not that cool down but you know that charge up and then finally be able to release it and half the time in most loops by the time you could pull up a charge and then release it like they're already around the corner or they're just making it around a tree or whatever is going to block you from hitting them with the vomit um the charge speed was nice and now it's cut in half so i mean that's that's a direct nerf so yeah 
exorcism amulet increases corrupt tur corrupt purge duration bonus to 10 seconds um was six seconds so you get a little extra time on your corrupt purge that's fine um uh and it's a four second buff and that might help like i don't know um but it is it is a buff. Uh, Devotee's Amulet. Increased Corrupt Purge duration bonus to 20 seconds was 8 seconds. Um, that one's pretty decent. Like, that's a decent amount of time to put on your Corrupt Purge. Uh, it's going to help you find people, and if they're good at looping, you know, you need a little extra time. It feels real bad to run out of your Purge mid-chase um, when you could have gotten it down out of it. Um, add on Black Ins... Oh, God. Uh, black incense increase survivor aura reveal duration to three seconds was five seconds um two seconds one way or another is not a giant deal um but it is a nerf like it's a it's a really good add-on for if people are sick you will occasionally um see their auras when they are vomiting and stuff like you'll so you see them pop up around the map it's a very very good add-on for um like reducing it to three seconds is fine um, but it is it is it is a nerf um, to an ultra rare add-on. Add on iridescent seal removes speed penalty while holding corrupt purge. Um, that is very nice. Like when you hold your corrupt purge, um, like you slow down, and so. Um, remove the speed penalty while holding corrupt purge is super nice because you could actually you know like with the clown you can you can load your bottle and you can run at the same speed um you know if you if you couldn't um that would be bad um you used to have a much greater slowdown after you threw the bottle so they still got you on the other end but you could run around aiming it at full speed um, the same thing with uh, with her corrupt charge, except for hers is a, a charge up and then an actual like you know stream of vomit that you have to aim. So so that's a that's a buff. That's great. Um, uh, prayer tablet Fra prayer tablet fragment. Vile purge no longer affects survivors. Um, increased object infection duration by 40 seconds. Increases infection from infected objects by 100. Um, increases devious blood points by 100. So it's another gimmick blood point one. Like your your vomit doesn't actually infect survivors unless it is on an object. Whatever. Um, I would never use it. Um, but that's that's really what they're trying to do there. Um, just another kind of gimmick for extra blood points. Um, most killers have them now. Like. We're gonna make your killer stupid, but you're gonna get a hundred extra blood points every time you do it. Yeah. Um, reworked add on Oilbenum Incense. Survivors who cleanse of fountains have their auras revealed for four seconds. Not bad. Um, I mean, but generally, if you are looking and paying attention, you will see when um, a fountain lights up, so you'll know where they are. The four seconds is not bad. It's like a teeny tiny bomby barbecue, I guess. <sighs> but um, not sure the rarity, um, and that would make a difference. Otherwise, that wouldn't be a bad one to run. But I would probably use the the um, erases the move speed penalty for holding corrupt purge, and then um, maybe the charge speed one. Uh, let's see, prophylactic amulet decreases the number of pools of devotion in the trial by two. I don't know if that's any good at all because if they fill them up, they reset. Like, if they use up everyone in the game, um, and everybody has healed at them, and you have not gone to use your power, um, they will reset, and you will lose all option to use those fountains until they are re-dirtied again by six survivors. And, and the game is not going to last that long. Um, really don't see any point in it. Um, maybe to make it harder for them to find, but then they're also going to be farther away from you when you want to use one. Which is, once again, one of the core problems with the plague is when you would like your power, sometimes you have to stop what you're doing and run all the way across the map to, to get it. And that feels bad. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Incense ointment. Ingesting the corruption at a pool of devotion causes all survivors in the plague's terror radius to scream and reveal the locations. Um, that's not bad. Um, I don't know the rarity of it. Doesn't talk about it here, but that's certainly not bad. It's going to give you, you know, if you if there is someone in the terror radius, it is going to give you a heads up that they're there, and you're getting your vile purge, 
um, and you can go and, and start a chase right away, hopefully. Um, will it always happen like that? Hard to say. And same thing, um, uh, you know, with with other kind of perks of that nature where you, you light up survivors within your terror radius and, and you can see where they are briefly. Um, so it's fine, um, unless it's like an ultra rare, and then I don't know if it would be worth it or not. Um, reworked add-on, Violometic, increases velocity of vomit projectiles by 10. Um, the, the vomit is not a stream, um, it is basically several small projectiles, um, and that's how it, it works in the game. So it's not just a stream, you know, it's little tiny chunks and pieces and um, we don't really have the numbers on how that works or whatever, but, but we do know that it is in projectile form, little bits and pieces. Uh, so like it speeds it up a little bit, that could be helpful. Um, don't know the, once again, don't know the rarity of the add-on, um, but that would be a fine one to run if you didn't have anything else to do. Um, developer's notes, these changes are intended to be a general buff and to enhance quality of life for the plague. Um, it is far too common for players to attempt a quick purge only to accidentally re release the charge a fraction of a second too early and unintentionally end up in cooldown. And that would often happen, especially when you're trying to spit on gens or get a quick shot on somebody before they got around the corner. And then you would not only you get the cooldown, but you get the slowdown as well and it felt super bad, so that's nice. That might help a little bit in chase. Um, so we've changed the behavior of early releases uh, to charge to a minimum threshold instead of going on cooldown. Uh, we also have buffed the options for focusing on infecting objects during the trial, with infected objects now increasing infection faster than non-infected ones. I mean, I enjoy the plague. Like I have not played a ton of her recently, um, but but she's 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 a fun variety killer. She's a ranged killer, um, but she has very uh, unique mechanic, right? And like you make people sick, and once they get sick enough, not only I mean are they making more noise the whole time, and they kind of have a little green gassy aura above them. Not the aura you can see like barbecue, but I mean if you see someone walking through tall grass or stuff, you can see it rising off them, and you can also hear them coughing and being sick. And vomiting which is cool um, so it helps you pick out people but um, and, and then when they get sick enough then they're in the broken status then they lose uh, a health state um, you also like uh, before you couldn't switch killers in the lobby anymore um, uh, when I would come against a team that would have four med kits, I would most likely either play Granny with Franklin's or I would put in the Plague because uh, med kits are useless versus the Plague. You cannot, it, it doesn't work. Only way you can heal is at the fountains or if you were just normally injured by her regular attack. Um, but once you are broken with that, the only way you can heal that and cleanse it is, um, is at the totems. I mean, it's at the fountains. So. Uh, I mean, it's good, but, you know, it's a thing. Uh, we have also buffed the options for focusing on infected objects during the trial, with infected objects now increasing infection faster than non-infected ones. Um, like, it's good to get them infected as soon as you can. Um, the more people, and then it gives you a longer time to knock these people down who are running around one hit away from the ground. And that's good. Like, it, it is. Um, and I would I would probably try to play the Plague more if the game kind of wasn't in the state that it's in right now. Um, like, if I was just playing and wanted to practice and, and, and get some more time in honor and see how it really worked out, um, I absolutely would. Um, and we'll see. Maybe we will. Um, you know, sometimes it's a little quality of life things that, that make things feel a lot better. But, uh, but against really good teams, you're, you're still, you're going to suffer. Um, you just don't have the tools and they can avoid you uh, very, very well. And when you do down someone, um, you're not getting people down fast enough for the rest of her kit to work, right? And then at the end of the game, when they're down to last gen and they know that they're at 75% on that gen or whatever, um, you know, people are just going to run off and they're going to go heal at a fountain and then they're going to be gone. And, and, and that many times is how play games end. Um, you know, not necessarily maybe all four, but, you know, two or three, depending on. 
like and you can't stop it very well and if you run across the map to go get one of those fountains to get your vile purge on uh your corrupt purge on um like they're already out the door like it's 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 a real tough thing to play against with her so unless you get stuff done in early to mid game with the plague you're you're in trouble and um and that's the same for most killers but it's especially with her since everybody has the option even if they're all on death hook even if they're all broken by your vomit even if they've been working on infected objects and not caring because they're just trying to punch out a gen in 42 seconds then they just walk and they cleanse the fountain, they're gone. So, I mean, like, it's 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 the actual mechanics of the plague that are, are problematic, but most of these things are, are fine. Um, uh, I think the problem is they're not fixing the actual killer, they're, they're, they're just adjusting the add-ons to, to kind of, like, band-aid stuff that should actually just be how that killer works. Um, doesn't make her play much differently, it just fixes things that make her not super great. Um, so otherwise, I mean, a positive thing. I mean, I will I will take it, but it it, it doesn't really solve a bunch with her. So um, we're gonna move on to the next section uh, with the death slinger. I'll be right back. So let's continue, my friends, with the death slinger. The death slinger must now wait for the exit aim animation to complete before being able to attack. 0 0.06 seconds. Doesn't sound like a lot, like. We're gonna see how it plays out, right? Um, uh, but but uh, but most people and most people who played the PTR and have come out with videos, like it just it doesn't feel real great. Um, uh, one of the things that was nice about the Deathslinger that made him a little bit different um, was his ability to to attack quicker uh, after after he shot, right? Sometimes you you miss a shot, then you can follow up with a melee attack. And um, like these are things that the hunters can't do. These are things that it, it, it differentiated him, you know, since like your your actual move and shooting someone and then taking all the time to reel them in takes more time than throwing a hatchet. Um, you know, having having those things just felt okay. Like I mean, it just felt decent. Um, I know I, I realized that when Deathslinger first came out, people were probably pretty annoyed with him. Um, but after that, he fell off pretty hard. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's some Deathslinger mains out there that are pretty unhappy right now. But um, once again, like, I feel like that uh, we're, we're having some adjustments to things that didn't really need adjusting. Um, this was not breaking the game. Um, he was not knocking down uh, sweaty Swifts left and right. Um, he was not a terror in comp. Um, he wasn't any of those things. Like, he was a decent killer, he's a discount huntress, and that's what he's always been. And, um, but yet, we're adjusting him. So, um, increased movement speed when aiming down sights to 85% was 75%. And that's a little compensation um, for the one that comes down here. Um, the Deathslinger must now wait for the enter aim animation to complete before being able to fire. 0 0.04 seconds. Doesn't sound like a lot, but one of the big things that you could do with Deathslinger, especially with how mobile and wiggly and back and forthy that survivors are, um, like they're very, very good at dodging at a certain point, and um, you really, really have to read them. And not only do you have to read them, but you have to have something that happens quickly, right? And and so like. You know, if you get really decent with the Huntress, you know, you can kind of predict it, but you're still going to miss some stuff. Um, Deathslinger allowed you to quickly do a quick shot. Like, I mean, just aim and tap. You know, just kind of half aim and tap. And that, sometimes with the difference between someone making it around the corner or making it to a window and then, or not. And, and and that's sort of what they're taking away. Like this 0.4 seconds is a little, it's it's misleading because you, you've got to get it all the way up into the aim animation and you, you change pers perspective slightly. And then that's the amount of time that that person got away with. And um, I, I, I don't, I don't know if you're, I mean, I, I, I think that you're going to feel it. Um, um, but I, there are other changes down the line that that hurt just as much, if not more. So, um, 
We'll, we'll, we'll go back up and read them all though. Uh, the cooldown when the survivor breaks free is now the same duration as a successful hit cooldown. Um, that's not bad. Like you had a super long dramatic stun um, when like if you shot someone in an area where you couldn't reel them in and the chain broke or a survivor walked in front of the chain and broke it for them. You know, it wasn't exactly the strongest thing in the game. Uh, you got this big dramatic stun. I think it was four four seconds maybe i i, I want to say it was around four seconds for the complete animation to recover almost like not quite a flashlight blind but in the ballpark it was pretty decent i mean so like they got you know uh deep wounds applied to them you know once they you know got off the chain but you know you had a big hefty stun and then pretty much the chase was over um unless they really really screwed something up so, so that's nice, right? And then and then this, increased movement speed when aiming down sights to 85. That's nice too, but um, we come here. And, and this, this one is, is kind, of, kind, of, kind of the bad right here. The increased terror radius to 32 meters. The reason for this and their justification, I am pretty sure, um, we'll discuss it down here. Uh, it says, we were unhappy with how easy it was for players to insta-scope survivors, just do a quick shot, especially given how little counterplay this had for survivor players. The reason that quick shots existed and people tried to get good at them because the counterplay to the Deathslinger is wiggling back and forth with your keyboard. The counterplay was already in favor of survivors, and if you got decent at quick scoping, that helped level the playing field. It's something you had to do and practice at to get decent at, because uh, Dead by Daylight is not exactly an FPS, and the hitboxes are a little weird, and uh, obviously survivors have a lot of mobility and um, good ones. Um, you can sometimes barely even hit with your pain stick because they're spinning around so much. So. Uh, that's where this kind of hurts him like it's it's not great but so to combat this the deathslinger now has a minimum enter exit times when aiming down sights before being able to shoot and then being able to attack normally we've also adjusted the stun when survivors break three to be the same as a successful hit giving players a choice to break the reel early in exchange for losing out on the damage or deep wound so um, like if you just wanted to drop the chase and not and, and and now you would take less of a stun but but then they they're 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 not getting damage which was like if you didn't successfully um, get it done or if they broke the chain before you were able to whack them they didn't get the deep wounds so they shortened the stun um, they're they're speeding up his aiming down sights slightly um, and uh, Oh, well, let's keep going. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll finish before we finish. The Deathslinger's add-ons. Uh, Gold Creek Whiskey, remove movement speed penalty. That's fine. I, it was... Any... Like, a lot of killer perks have to do with adding a positive effect and then having a slight negative effect in another place. Like, and it's so... <laughs> It's so annoying. <laughs> like, we can't just have nice things, right? We can't have something that just has, you know, a nice little buff to a skill or whatever, or a nice little speed up or an extra slowdown to whatever. Like, it's got to be, like, you know, extra charge time or it makes you slower or whatever. Like, um, yeah. So, at least they removed that. Uh, Marshall's badge, remove movement speed penalty. Uh, iridescent coin, uh, decreased range requirement to 12 meters was 15 meters. Um, Hellshire Iron, when a survivor speared, gain undetectable. I think, if I remember correctly, Hellshire Iron was the one where if you hit someone at max distance, like I believe it was like 18 meters, and reeled them in, they were in, they were exposed. Um, that's not something you were doing all the time. This was not a broken add-on by any means. Um, you had to get lucky and have a clear path for 18 meters in between you and the survivor so you could actually reel them in and then you would knock them down. They would be exposed. So even if they were healthy, you would knock them down. Once again, pretty tough thing to do with all the crap that's in the way in uh, Demo Daylight. Um, so, so what this does, and, and it, it's this part, um, this was the one thing that made him different from the other range killers in the game. He did not have a hum, and he does not have a hum. They did not add one, um, but instead, 
Uh, they gave a 110 move speed killer a 32 meter terror radius. So you can hear him 8 meters before you used to be able to. And on top of this, you used to be able to, and I currently, I think I still have it on his build, I have modern abuse, so I can drop that 24 meters down to 16 meters. And now we're Michael Myers in tier two, running around with a spear gun. And that would help, that would help you start chases. It would help you get the drop on people. Like there are things like, I mean, you're, you're 110 move speed killer, like, like like the Huntress, like the Hag, like your, your chase is not great. That's why you have a gun with a chain on it. And getting closer to people um, made for a better start for your chases and gave you a better chance of getting a good down. Um, your map pressure is garbage. Like you don't, you, you don't get around real fast. Like you just kinda, you know, partner up over into the here's the shack oh and there's a there's a gen over there and i'm gonna go no like he's it, like 110 movement speed killers um are generally either the range killers or like granny um has the teleporting with the traps right if she could teleport traps and be 115 move speed like that could be a problem for people like um I would be absolutely disgusting. Then that whole, like, you can't chase anything would, would be very different. Um, but, so now you can hear him eight meters before he um, even gets there. And, and, and just to make it back to what it used to be, you know, for a normal range killer, um, you'd have to play monitor and views just to get it back down to there. And I don't know if that's worth it. Like, you'd get up close to people. Um, you would run that and, like, nurse is calling. And you could get up close enough um, to you see people healing and be able to, you know, get close enough to make a chase and, you know, get another spear shot and, uh, and, and start another chase, right? Like, it, it gave you something different. Like, I mean... From that aspect, he actually has advantages over the Huntress. You know, like he didn't have this hum where you hear him coming forever. Like all of a sudden, he was just kind of there, and and it still didn't make him broken. Like, 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 and so that's the problem. Is that like here's here's a problem that really didn't need fixing. You know, I'm sure that people um, are not a fan of facing um, the Deathslinger, but people are also not a fan of facing the Doctor. Um, people are not a fan of facing Pinhead. Are any of those killers broken? No. No. Like, they're just not. Like, um, some people might really, really hate facing the Trapper because, like, if the Trapper gets on a roll, man, that, it kind of sucks. But uh, is he the strongest killer in the game? No. Um, so this was this is a straight up nerf to a killer that had some decent utility and and, and did okay. Like you could play well with a Deathslinger. Um, sooner or later, you would you know run into groups that you just weren't going to beat. The gens would move too fast, and you have no map pressure. Like you just you can't catch people fast enough to stop it. And and now this just makes it worse. Like the 32 meter uh, terror radius um, for someone who is only 110 move speed is 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 a killer. Uh, people will be like, it's just eight meters, and and I will I will let you know right now, like like even even a normal gameplay with normal speed killers and you know running whatever buffs or anything that you want to run, like the moment a good survivors like hear you, they will either hide very efficiently or they will just shift W and run away. And that automatically extends the chase out another 20, 30 seconds before it's even begun, even if you decide to continue that chase because you see them go into a strong structure. They, they run into shack. Like you had literally no chance to even start the chase. Um, that's gonna be 10 times worse on the Death Slinger because he is slower. Same thing, um, you know, I mean, it's with the Huntress, but Huntress, you just, you throw hatches, you hit people, they go down. Um, here, Death Slinger, you gotta hit a little bit of a smaller hitbox from what I've understood. That's what I have read. Um, but, um, and then you've got to reel them in and that's if there's not crap in the way and that's not it. That's if they're not in a, in, in a group and they're body blocking the hooks and breaking them and then you're just shit out of luck. Um, like the Slinger was, was fine. 
He was he was a cool ranged flavor killer. Um, I I actually didn't mind playing him. I wasn't the best at him, but I also wasn't the worst at him. But I think once again, it's kind of a shame that 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 uh, something that really didn't need addressing once again is being addressed uh, because we were unhappy with how easy it was for players in survivors. This is this is all about kind of like you know new player squishy game huggy feelings like and. And what it does is it just eliminates uh, another killer um, up in the up in the higher ranks of game, like the, the higher skill players. And because you 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 needed those extra things, you you needed to be able to quick scope survivors. You needed to be able to sneak up on survivors um, to to really stand a chance. And and Deathslinger wasn't bad at those things. Um, but wasn't broken. Didn't need to be fixed. But there you go. So Ghostface. Um, uh, Night Shroud recovery time decreased to 24 seconds plus 30 seconds. That's fine. That's a buff. Straight buff. Add-on. Walleye's matchbook. Decreased Night Shroud recovery recover, uh, bleh. Decreased Night Shroud recovery modifier to 2 seconds was 4 seconds. Um, so I'm thinking that is a nerf? Yes. Um, yeah, because it, now it's just recovering an extra 2 seconds um, per X amount of time. This is, so it used to be four. Uh, Olsen address book, decreased nitro recovery modifier to three seconds was six seconds. So those are nerfs to compensate for the smaller amount of time that Night Shroud takes to activate. And that's your stealth power, um, your sneaky deaky power. Um, and so you're able to get it more often, um, which you used to, have to run, used to have to run at least one add-on for. Um, to, to, to do that, to make it feel decent, so you had it up a decent amount of the time. Uh, chewed pen, discree oh, and the same thing. Decreased night shroud recovery modifier to four seconds was eight. Um, so you would use this one, and then you would use one of these two, um, depending on what did you ha what you had in your inventory. And that's that was kind of like really the only add-ons that I honestly ever used on it because the the recovery of this power was the important part. I mean, where you could get it back during a chase and then use it at a loop and become you know you've got no red stain and you've got you know like no heartbeat and it makes it you know difficult for the survivor to to continue to loop you if you you know know how to run a loop at all. Um, but uh, player feedback about Ghostface add-ons was very clear. Decreased recovery time was more appealing than any other option. Uh, I just said that. Um, in light of this, we have baked in roughly half of the effect of these add-ons to encourage a wider variety of selection. Uh, then they probably should have made the rest of his add-ons worthwhile to play too. Um, I don't remember if there's a ton of them that are. Um, a lot of them involve like uh, working with your stocking and stocking behind objects and. and, and <sighs> Like the problem is, is like you can you can use the stock during the game to get people down. In in fact, like if you are coming up on a gen and people aren't paying attention, you should just stock them, right? Like if they don't hear you, they're not looking, and you can just you know peek out around a corner and fill them full of stock and then get them you know down in one hit. You should do that. But if you were spending like half your game like trying to find good angles to peek in on survivors, um, like you're gonna lose the game. Like you're wasting so much time um, doing that. That doesn't mean you can't get little bits during the course of the game and save it up for a crucial part later on, but once again, the games have to go that long. So um, it's kind of a risk versus reward thing. Um, I, I like Ghostface. I, I actually enjoy playing him, but but really that he's, he's a very, very much a one-trick pony. It's not a un, it, it's not a bad one-trick pony. Um, not having a red stain and not having a tier radius, once again, stealth is very powerful in this game. You also, you know, have the ability to, to, to crouch at will. You're the only killer in the game that can take back. <laughs> um, so, so this is fine. This is a, this is a uh, very small buff um, to uh, a killer that is generally recognized on the lower half of killers right now. Like, I mean, he, he, he's not in the, the strong middle, like, most people are like, you know, bottom three are, are Clown, maybe Ghostface, um, maybe Trickster, maybe Pinhead, depending on who you talk to. Like, um, but uh, just, I, I mean, it's fine. It's, it's a straight buff. Uh, the Blight. Um, Adrenaline Vial. Increased Rush Token Recharge Bonus to one second. Uh, was 0 0.075 seconds. Added effect. 
increases rushing speed by 10. So the very small buff to the to the blight on this particular add-on. Uh, add-on summoning stone increased pallet blocking range to 16 meters uh, was 12 meters. Increased pallet blocking duration to 15 seconds was se six seconds. Uh, it was just, there was nothing to it before, <laughs> like. Um, like so I mean I guess that they were like hey that was that was dumb let's fix it um, the add-on adrenaline vial is supposed to enable an alternate straight line dash playstyle for players interested in novelty while it is still unlikely to be stronger than baseline blight play increased movement speed and token recharge should make the alternate playstyle a bit more viable additionally the values on summoning stone have been increased to better reflect the perk it is referencing hex blood favor which is also down the row here um, you'll see is getting an adjustment so that's why they adjusted that um uh really i mean it's fine like i i, I appreciate little that that they're attending to little things and being like hey you know what this isn't working great let's just tweak it a little bit um that's fine um but nothing special there um, um at least it wasn't the nerf but i'm sure it's coming <laughs> He was, he, there's like there's the three left and it was nurse the spirit and the blight at high level play and um yeah uh the oni add on scalped top knot reduced demon dash activation reduction to 0.5 seconds was one second easy one here scalp top knot was overperforming when used so it needed an adjustment to bring it in line and so it was a nerf to like the one add-on that you needed to i mean maybe not necessarily needed to but but it helped a lot um when you're activating your demon dash um instead of like the big old wind up that it was um overperforming like once again he I, I think that you can play well with the Oni, but like it's just a lot of work for not as much payoff as you'd like. Sometimes I felt that maybe it, it's it's in its way is 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 stronger than, than than Michael because you can you can get a decent number, you know, three or four good dashes depending on how the length how how long the game goes. Um, whereas Michael, you know, good game maybe two or three two th tier threes and that's tops i mean you're, you're capped because you know survivors have only x amount of stock that you can get out of them and maybe someone with more stock that you w weren't able to get you know is dead or whatever um, whereas like survivors are chock full of blood so um, if the game goes a decent amount of time you you're, you're not going to be boned and that's sort of an advantage and not to mad you know not to mention the fact that he can cover the map very fast during his demon dash and then he can swing around his you know bam bam club and and whack people it's just it's a little it's a little hinky and it's another one of those it's another one of those killers that are very successful if you find people out of place or out in the open and and, and generally um that means people that that don't know you're coming and, and don't know how to evade your power and that's it's generally newer survivors and it's not going to be you know your swift spot they're going to see you coming a mile away and they're already going to be halfway across the map like they're not dumb like that's why they that that's why they're as good as they are like they know when to move they know that the they can come back to those gens they know they can go on another gen they know they they don't have to sit in and sweat it out and you know just get mashed down because you're like oh i held on to the gen too long and there's a giant demon running at me with a club the size of a tree no like they're gone they move and so things like this, especially if you were in a chase and then trying to use your your demon dash to capitalize on it while you had a survivor in your sights, this was pretty standard, like pretty standard um, and uh, unnecessary to a killer that barely anybody uses in the first place. Um, I would like to play him some more, but sometimes, honestly, like it, sometimes it just feels real bad. Um, like when survivors are are, are are getting stuff taken care of and, and business is popping um i don't know i think i think he's fine like i mean he's not top tier but i i think only is fine and this was this is a half second uh nerf to probably his most commonly used add-on it, it, it was it necessary no um but does it once again like feel like another stab in the kidneys for killer yes it does it absolutely does um 
Survivor perks. The all following perks have become general perks and their names have changed. So now we're moving to the survivor stuff. Um, babysitter is now guardian. Camaraderie is now kinship. Second wind is now renewal. Better together is now situational awareness. Fixated is now self aware. Inner strength is now inner healing. Obviously, these are all from the Stranger Things chapter and with licensing issues with Netflix, pulling the plug. Or just getting the license back. I've actually never bothered to uh, read why, but uh, but that's why uh, I believe Hawkins Lab is leaving, and then um, and then that's why there's not going to be any more like new stuff and all of these perks, including the Demogorgon's perks, and then these are uh, these are Steve and Nancy's perks, and they're just getting their names changed for licensing purposes. No real issue there. Um, perk balancing, Vigil. Recovery bonus increased to 20, 25, 30% was 10, 20, 10, 15, 20. Added broken, exposed, and oblivious to the status effects modify this perk. Um, Vigil is kind of a niche perk, um, but if you are if you are playing in a in a group that's coordinated, uh, this is not a bad perk to run, and and and, and now it's got a buff. Like um, it helps get rid of nasty statuses, and also I believe Vigil helps you recover your exhausted, um, your your exhaustion perks quicker as well. Like if you're not obviously if you're not running, but if you're standing still working on a gen, it's going to help your buddies like fill up their power meter quicker, um, and get rid of you know statuses that are mildly annoying um faster so um survivor buff well it's a perk buff people may use it you know in more coordinated scenarios and might get more use out of it uh guardian for me babysitter um at a seven percent haste status effect for the rescued survivor um so removing the killer seeing your aura well remove the killer seeing your aura Killer aura visibility for you increased to eight seconds was four seconds. So that's a, I mean, like, so basically you would unhook somebody, right? And then you had to, like, kind of hang out with them and stuff. And uh, the killer was able to see your aura and you were able to see the killer's aura. And so now, as in a direct nerf to the killer and a direct buff to the perk, um, you, the killer can no longer see the aura. So. There it is. Um, is it game breaking? No. Is it annoying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the people, uh, reduce the duration of the broken status effect to 80, 70, 60 seconds or was 110, 190 seconds. For the people, honestly, a decent perk. I've seen I've seen enough people use it. Um, but basically, you're you're exchanging your healthy state to someone's downed state or or injured state to instantly bring them up a health state um, and then it puts you in the broken status um, it would have been used to be for 90 seconds at rank three where you couldn't heal or i believe you can't even be healed i'm not even sure um, but where you couldn't heal yourself with a med kit or self-care or anything like that you just had to wait out the status um, and then that's so that's 30 less seconds 30 seconds is a big deal in the game. Um, this is not a perk where I, I've not seen people use it. Um, not not rampant, but I mean, honestly, like you just you see a ton of the straight four meta perks. Um, but sometimes when you are playing groups, you will see stuff like this. You'll have someone that's dedicated to you know a quick pickup off the ground by using four of the people or whatever. I mean, there's soul guards and yada yadas. Um, and so, um, survivor buff. Um, when is opportunity? This one is huge. I actually probably will start using this on Jane. I like this perk. When is opportunity? Increase effective range to 24, 28, 32 meters. So full, full terror radius size. It used to be 20 meters, which wasn't that much. Still was plenty though. Um, removed cooldown after vaulting or dropping a pallet. So the trick with this one, not that it made it bad, but, um, you could see all the available windows and unused pallets like around you in a 20 meter radius and it's honestly very helpful for for new players um or people who are not you know survivor gods like myself uh, where you could really you know really think about plotting out where you're running um and then after you vaulted something or used a pallet it would go on cooldown for a little bit so it balanced it instead of like giving you x-ray vision all the way around the map to all the places that you need to loop now there is no there there there's not going to be any cooldown you're going to have it on the entire time um they did this with another perk i believe killer for Xanchin tactics the tactics it's kind of the killer version of it, it came from the oni um 
where you can see stuff like that. You can see the, the pallets and you can see the windows, but um, uh, no one uses it on killer. I mean, you don't get as much use out of it out of, as killer as you do as survivor. Survivor, you can really look ahead and not even be thinking and then be plotting out, I'm gonna hit here and I've got, I've got a window into a pallet and then I've got, you know, shack over here or I've got whatever. I can see that out, I can plan it out. And for people who aren't like, you know, like I've memorized every square inch of every map, like, you know, God, Kings and Queens of, of the fog. Like this is a, it, it's a great perk and, and they've buffed the shit out of it. Um, I'll, I'll be using it, you know, um, and so that's great. Uh, uh, repressed Alliance, generator rep repair requirement reduced uh, to 50, 55, 50 and 45 seconds. Every three was 80, 70, 60 seconds. Um, once in a while, I see someone use this perk, and and honestly, like 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 real talk, like this is this is an annoying perk. Like if you're a killer and you have just if you are running like Pop Goes Weasel, which is a ridiculously common regression perk that most killers run in one version or another, um, and you have found out that someone's on a gen, or you've heard it, or you you can see them, and you you run over to go pop that gen and they have a repressed alliance like it seals up the gen with entity claws and you can't kick it and i think it lasts it lasts a long time it's like 30 seconds at least but enough to where your pop is wasted or maybe you know like this one is nearly done so you're not going to be able to kick that and stop that um and now you might wasted on a lesser gen or you might not even get to use it at all this is this is i mean i'm not saying everybody should run this um but um but honestly for for killers that are trying to regress your gens and stuff it also i believe that when the entity claws on it if ruin is up uh, it, you, it doesn't regress it's the same thing like thrilling tremors and uh, corrupt intervention things like that well you can't touch them in corrupt intervention anyway but um like Gens do not regress when they are covered up by the claws, and I'm pretty sure that this is the same thing. So it's going to protect it from ruin for 30 seconds, it's going to stop you from popping it for 30 seconds, and you're certainly, as a killer, you're not going to sit there and wait that amount of time to <laughs> to, to wait to, to try to pop the gen. One, your, your pop is going to run out, um, and two, uh, you just wasted 30 seconds in a game that lasts, lasts six minutes sometimes. So probably not the best idea. Um, built the last, reworked. After hiding inside of a locker for 14, 13, 12 seconds with a depleted item in hand, 99% of his charges are refilled. Um, each use of built the last reduces the amount of charges refilled by 33, added stinger audio when item charges are refilled. Um, I mean, that's, it's, that's, that's pretty strong. Um, you know, you're, 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 you, you used up your flashlight by, um, you know, clicking it too much or, or repeatedly blinding the killer or whatever. Like, I mean, like stuff uses up like, and, and now you can just hop in a locker for 12 seconds and you can recharge it completely. And then you can hop in the chart, hop in the locker again and then recharge it, um, to, uh, you know, two thirds of its charge. And then finally recharge it one more time for another 33% of the charge. Oh, uh, well, sorry. It's a dog issue. Thank you for your patience, my friends. Um, so, honestly, it, it, it's a good perk. Uh, will it replace meta perks? No, but uh, definitely there's value to be had there, especially if you're going to be, like, you know, lead flashlight kid on, on your team. Um, you know, you're the one that can, like, really, really time your shots well. Um, that's not gonna be a bad perk for you like you're extending the crap out of the life of the item that you're bringing in um by any means necessary added effect you can see the auras of drop pallets so this one sucks um once again not a completely meta perk but honestly when people run it kind of a pain in the ass because as killer like if someone drops a pallet you're not always kicking them like there are there are many loops where you are much better off running around the short end of the loop and just continuing the chase um, and the survivor doesn't get as much distance. Um, but if you leave those pallets down by any means necessary, they can walk they can walk over and use this and they can lift up the pallet and literally reuse it. Like your job as killer is to break as many pallets as humanly possible and still win the game because pallets suck. 
and they're everywhere. So the more you can get rid of, the better off you're doing. Here, if you didn't bother to break a couple pallets because you were in a tight chase and someone now can see the auras of drop pallets, and they can just run over and reset the pallet again. Resetting a loop is is deadly. Being able to reset that loop and put that pallet back into place, so not only like can they just run around it again two or three times until you get close enough um, to have the pallet drop in your face again, um, but yeah, like you just doubled the life out of that loop, and maybe it's a super strong loop. Maybe it's shack. Like maybe it's whatever. Like it depends. Now, now is. I mean, and that's that's very very strong, but but the amount of times that you may get to use the game may not be a ton. Like the killer's not necessarily gonna like just leave all the pallets up so you can go reset them. That would be madness, um, especially after you, if you if you found out uh, that someone is resetting the pallets, you would break them all from there on out. Uh, but I mean, once again, it's it's a it's a straight buff uh, to a decent skill, like. Uh, same thing same thing with all these like they are uh, straight buffs uh, to decent skills like once again they're not they're not you know borrowed time DS uh, dead hard and unbreakable but like I mean they're they're all decent skills and they all got straight buffs <laughs> I mean yeah. All right. So no matter grunts of pain reduction increased to 25, 50, 75 percent was zero at 25, 50 percent. Um, it's sort of like a built in um, iron will um, and added effect. Your recovery speed is increased by 15, 20, 25 percent. So no matter is kind of like, I don't know, like I, I always anytime I see anybody run it now, like I, I realize they are probably trying to complete something. Um, you know, trying to complete something in the tome. And, uh, like, I try to take it easy on them because they really are just running around and they're broken the whole time. Like, they can't heal past the injured state. They can't do any of that. But they are very quiet. They also, if you've knocked them down and slugged them, they will be able to get up and, and, and with a free unbreakable as many times as you knock them down. Um, so there's some trade-offs. Also, it takes three hits and three hooks to put you out of the game. Like, so, I mean, like, that balances itself out. Um, but uh, otherwise, that's, that's fine. Like, um, uh, once again, I don't think we're going to see the no mither meta. Like, it's just not going to happen. But uh, nice if you are going to use it or do need to use it for, you know, completing a tome challenge or whatever. Um, dev notes, all these perks have low usage rate, low success rate, or both. They have all seen buffs to make them more appealing and more effective. Um, the problem is, is that all of these are actually good perks that I have seen plenty of people use in games. The problem is, is that you're not, none of them, none of them are replacing any of the meta perks. Like, they're just not. Um, like, you're, you're not going to run Guardian um, and get rid of your borrowed time. You know, you're not going to run uh, for the people and get rid of uh, Dead Hard. Um, you're probably not going to be running Windows of Opportunity, you know, if you're a 3,000 hour survivor main, um, because you know where all the windows and shit are anyway, and you'll just keep your perks that you're using anyway. Same thing, Repressed Alliance, cool niche use, um, you know, it's a decent perk that's gotten a straight buff on top of being a decent perk in the first place, um, but, uh, what do you leave now? Unbreakable? Like, I don't know. Built to last, same thing, by any means necessary, same thing. This one could be really annoying. Um, you know, if you're not breaking pallets, it's killer, but, um, you know, if you are breaking pallets, you're not going to get any use out of it. So once again, it's not replacing any of the meta perks. This is the problem with what they're doing is that they're not making anything strong enough to shake up the meta or they're not changing the meta perks enough on either side, not just survivors, um, on either side to, to stop people from using the, the same four to eight perks on killers and survivors. Like, unless, you know, I mean, and then, and yes, yeah, some of us are special snowf snowflakes and we do run our special little builds and whatever, but, you know, like outside of, you know, those four perks and, you know, and iron will and, and whatever your flavor you prefer of exhaustion perk is and, and head on and, you know, a, a few others, like that's really it. Like, you know, there, there's, there's some special sneaky builds and you can do this and, but at, at, at the, at the end of the day, like the, the, the. The people that I'm facing, I mean, it's it's pretty much straight DS. It's pretty much straight either Spring Purse or Dead Hard. It's pretty much straight at least two people have borrowed time. Um, and then the other two people uh, will have, 
Unbreakable. Um, and then um, and then the fourth perk is, is is their choice, but it's it's usually something right in right in those lines. So I mean, these these perks either have to be better than that, or they have to make the other perks less desirable to use for anybody to, you know, be like, oh goodness, they they buffed my favorite, you know, <laughs> any by any means necessary. It's my favorite mean perk, and they got a, and I got a buff. And not necessarily gonna is gonna show any reflection in the use. I mean, it, it might. Um, but the problem is, once again, up at the higher levels of play, like, people don't use these perks. Um, outside of, unless they're playing in a real coordinated squad and they've got something that they want to do. Like, Vigil might have some niche use. Um, that built the last thing, if you could go in and recharge your toolbox, recharge your flashlight, recharge your med kit. Like, honestly, that's, 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 that's strong. And not just once, but three times and still get use out of it. Um... Nuts. Um, falling perks become general perks. Their names have changed. Surge is now Jolt. Mindbreaker is now Fearmonger. Uh, Cruel Limits is now Claustrophobia. This is once again just the renaming of the uh, of the Demogorgon's perks because of the licensing issues. Uh, perk balancing: Hex, Hex Retribution. Oblivious condition changed to trigger from interacting with any type of totem was just cleansing hex totems. Um, increased aura reveal time to 15 seconds was 10 seconds. This is a hex perk that you run to find out if anybody was touching your hex perks. And they wonder why it was underperforming. Like, who is going to run this thing? Um, there is There was some niche use running this. Um, maybe, like, I don't even know. Uh, with Haunted Grounds, and uh, so you could get some aura reading after someone broke your totem, and you might be able to catch up with them and, and, and find them and maybe down them. Um, uh, it, it, was, it was a crap perk, it was a crap idea, and it was a hex totem, it, basically, uh, to, to boot. And, and so, uh, but now, um, if someone interacts with the totem, they will light up like a Christmas tree for 15 seconds. It's not terrible, but there are better ways to track people. Like, like, honestly. Uh, Hex Blood Favor. Ballot blocking effect now triggers off basic attacks and special attacks. It was just basic attacks. A lot of these, a lot of these skills used to be. Ballot blocking radius increased to 32 meters, was 16 meters. Cooldown has been removed. Um, you know what? This would be a decent perk if it wasn't a Hex perk. <laughs> Honestly, um, being able to uh, hit somebody and uh, block a pallet before they can actually get to it um, was was a decent idea, but it's tied to a hex perk, and and they're not great as it is. Uh, we're creating a place where it feels like you're you're forced to run rune and undying at certain levels just just to distract them long enough to go break those totems. No one's gonna break. Um, your blood favor they, they're not going to care uh they're uh, or someone will just casually walk by it and they'll break it and it's like you didn't bring it at all um hex third seal same thing blindness effect now triggers off basic attacks and special attacks uh third seal I mean, the neat i mean you can try to meme with it and and make everybody blind and then all of a sudden someone finds your totem after they're blind anyway and then it's done third seal is nobody uses it, it they're they're We'll, 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 we'll get to my uh, a thing in a second. Um, Hex Thrill of the Hunt. Survival penalty now applies to both cleansing and blessing actions. Was just cleansing. Well, it's because they're adding the boon totems to the game. Um, penalty stacks increased to 8, 9, 10% per stack. Was 4, 5, 6. Maximum penalty increased to 40, 45, 50. Was 30%. Loud noise notification has been removed. So it takes people longer if you use Thrill of the Hunt to protect your totems. Um, it makes it longer for them to cleanse. But now, so like when they would touch one of your totems and get on it, you would get the loud notification like someone missed a skill check, right? So you would know that something happened and you should go over there if you're protecting your rune totem or your whatever. You're, you know, you want to keep somebody off your devour because you've got four stacks and you can't wait to get one more. Whatever. But the loud, no loud noise notification has been removed. 
Like, I mean, they they they, they buffed all of the uh, all of the cleansing and 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 slowdown and stuff that it put on just for the the, the hex perks, <laughs> like for uh, but like this was a hex totem that you ran to protect your hex totems. Like that's how bad hex totems are. Like you had you have this one to protect your hex totems, and you have this one to tell us if someone's touching our hex totems, and um, you have this one to make them blind to where everything is in the game. No, like it's just it, it, it's bad. And then not only did so they 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 buffed it, but then they nerfed the bejesus out of it by getting rid of the notification. The notification was the part that was decent, and then the little bit of slowdown that it had allowed you to maybe break a chase if you wanted to and get across the map and protect your totem um, long since are the days gone by where we are viciously viciously protecting totems we throw them up there we know they're gonna die if we're real lucky it might last till later in the game and um, you know we're, we're not we're not running you throw the hunt and um, fearmonger Formerly Mindbreaker now applies exhausted and blindness to survivors. Was just exhausted. Um, like the thought here is neat, but I, the duration is is very small. It's like four or five seconds after you leave a gen. Like while you're on a gen, it doesn't matter if you're exhausted um, and and have blindness. If you know you can just get up and and, and walk away. Um, you, you lose maybe a little situational awareness um, with the blindness, but not much. And really, if you're on comms, it, it super doesn't matter anyway. The exhausted um, was was what it was before, and it wasn't that great anyway. Like, if you came up to a gen, they're already off it, and within three, four seconds after that, they're no longer exhausted, and their sprint first kicks in, and they're already gone. You know, or their dead heart is ready to go if you actually got a hit in. So, I mean, it was really, really pretty pointless to do it. Uh, so they have tried to buff um, an already fairly pointless perk. And it only works up until I believe 50% repair is done on the generator after 50% is done. So like if you're over halfway done with the gen, this this perk doesn't even apply to you. Like if it's a new gen that's being you know done up to 50% um, finished, um, that's the only time that this actually happens. So I mean, like it's a garbage perk, and um, they slightly buffed it. Um, here's the difference. All of these perks are absolutely trash. No one will use them for anything. Once in a while, out of all of these, Hex Thrill of the Hunt is something that I have occasionally used, and I will see people occasionally used if they are really doubling down, like, and they want to protect a totem in a totem build. Um, and even then, it's still hard. It's still hard to keep it up. But the slowdown helped. Now here, like you're getting a lot of additional slowdown to breaking your totems, but you're not getting notified that anybody's touching your totems, so you don't know. Like they could have, they could have maybe not buffed this so much, and and simply left the noise notification, and it probably would have been okay. Very few people would have used it ever, but it would have been fine. But instead, they nerfed the piss out of it and made it not worth using at all. It's just dumb. Um, like, unless you want to run Thrill of the Hunt and then Retribution on top of Undying and Ruin. So if someone gets on your totem, you're going to see their aura for 15 seconds. And then, you know, you can run across the map and, and stop what you're doing and the chase that you're in to go whack somebody off of one of your totems. No, you're not. You need to get that down. Like, if it's right next to you, sure. Like, if it's within chasing distance, yeah, go break it up. But you're not going to stop a chase where you're potentially downing a survivor and getting a hook, getting progression in the game and putting pressure on the map to stop what you're doing and running across the map to go whack someone off your totem unless that is your plan going into the match. Like, you're defending Devour Hope or, you know, you don't want your rune totem to go down. If you're busy defending your rune totem, it's not going to make any difference in the game that you ran ruin because because they're just doing the gens and rune isn't affecting him. You need to put pressure on the map for rune to work. You need to chase people off gens for them to regress. So all of these are dumb and, and they, they're just minor buffs to them uh, to make them slightly more usable and no one's probably going to use them. Blood Favor is mildly interesting but the problem, the thing that wrecks it is that it's tied to a hex perk and someone can just go break it when they happen to be running casually around the map or it spawns beside a generator like they still do after five years. 
it's just dumb. So so these got you know some a little bit of rebalancing. You know, like they they, they got a little bit of a buff, and they're still never going to be used. These were all decent perks for survivors, and they all got fairly generous buffs to them, making them. They're trying to make them attractive enough to 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 get them into you know people wanting to use them um, you know and, and for flavor uh, to break up the meta to do whatever like these are all decent perks like there literally is no one that could come here and tell me that that I mean maybe maybe babysitter wasn't great um, but still was helpful you know like it helped uh, take heat off the person that you unhooked. Um, Across the lines, built the last. Uh, maybe it wasn't great before, but like now it's gonna be, like now it's gonna be fairly sick. Like I mean, basically infinite flashlight for the entire game. Um, you know, six, seven, eight minute game. Like you will always, always have flashlight charges, or you can go refill your toolbox or your med kit and be infinitely heal botting. Like on top of your boom totems. Uh, so, so this is the difference. Like these were all decent perks that, that received decent buffs and, and could potentially come in and, and be even worse to play against than that some of them were before. And uh, these are crap, terrible perks that no one ever used and no one is going to use. Just like, like so many of these these killer changes, are are the same thing. Like they're very slight buffs, and, and we're we're gonna give it like a final overview. And I'm gonna try not to go on to the three hour mark, but, um, but it's a thing. So optimization, we'll probably stop here, right? Um, we we've implemented a status of preloading system to fix issue of hitches when a status effect is first applied during match. Currently imp implemented for adrenaline balanced, uh, no one escapes death, sloppy, and the shapes evil within. Um, fix an issue that could cause hitches when a survivor is unhooked. Um, performance optimizations of all survivor items. Performance optimization of all on all hex perks. I mean, whatever. Dead dog saloon very old, great. Um, whoops. So, there's a whole list of bug fixes I do not know if I'm even going to go into. I think, I think, um, what we're going to do is kind of give an overview at this point, because this has probably been probably about an hour, I'm guessing. Um, so what, what we've had here, um, like things are really tough in Dead by Daylight now with the skill-based matchmaking. It does not feel great as a killer. Um, I, in fact, last night watched one of my one of my favorite killers, um, who is probably one of the best doctors that I've ever seen play, uh, has has quit playing doctor. Like he's done. Like he's just playing survivor. Um, he lives off his income streaming Dead by Daylight in house for some time. His name is Archdruid Dre. Go check him out. He's an amazing streamer. Um, one of the best doctor players you'll ever see and um is done he's he's done playing killer like <laughs> and until things change or 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 something changes but like literally like his livelihood is now in danger um luckily he also plays 50 50 and he plays uh ace as well and and uh, plays a bunch of survivor now um like it's it's real folks like it's not just me and to, and to have this coming in where we're going to um nerf the spirit we're going to nerf the death slinger um we're going to do some very very weird um sort of quality of life tuning um for some of the lower performing killers um to try to make it up for for taking away one of the one of the three strong killers in the game um, that are some of the ones that can only compete against teams at, at those you know high levels because of either their their map pressure, their ability to down people quickly and mind game at loops, or the ability to teleport through half the map and and get people down. You know if you sunk a couple thousand hours into her. <sighs> like we're 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 in dire straits here. Like I read through all those and we saw. Pretty much a um, bunch of bunch of uh, survivor buffs to find perks. I mean, I, none of them are going to break the game now, but they will be more attractive, I guess. But I mean, once again, they weren't bad perks in the first place, and and now they're even better. And um, and here we we've, we've taken out the spirit will be useless at high levels. She will still be fine to play for casual play, and if you are starting out, like she'll still be the spirit for the most part, right? Um, but but at higher level play, like survivors are, are are gonna game you, and you are 
you're going to be very sad. Like, that the spirit will not be a thing at high ranks anymore. Uh, they will hear you coming, they will be able to tell from the direction, and they will also be able to tell from the volume of the sound. And good survivors will run circles around you, and spirit will be buried. That's what it is. Like... They've already tested it out on the PTR, like, watched people play game after game after game against, like, you know, highly skilled squads and just buried. It didn't take, it didn't take the survivors long to pick it up at all, and it became very obvious. Um, uh, does she still get some downs? Sure. Um, but, but so does the Legion, you know. Um, so does the Pig. Uh, so does the Trickster. <laughs> like, it's... Um, uh, it just it feels bad in general like we're uh, they're they're really whether intentionally or not they're 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 doing real bad things to the game um you know once once you get past what would probably be considered you know purple ranks once you get up there it, it feels real bad it feels bad for for survivors too like i see people posting all the time i'm I'm probably on Twitter more than I should be, just trying to keep my finger on the pulse of the game and, and see if other people are honestly feeling as bad as I am about it. And, and they are, you know? <laughs> like, it's it, it's not just me. And and as, a, as someone who plays mostly killer um, and has gone and played some Survivor, because A, I don't mind it, and, and B, it's, it's nice to have a break from, you know, being a punching bag honestly like it's 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 uh it's 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 a tough it's a tough realm out there kids um you can go and watch any of your favorite killer streamers and either a they aren't streaming killer anymore um or they're doing you know one game of killer one game of survivor and um you know they're losing multiple games and then they'll win three four in a row and those are the ones that go up on youtube i mean like i you know go watch like it's it's just what it is um, and, and, and so when we see stuff like the spirit, uh, Deathslinger didn't need any adjustments. Um, I realized that it, it's not, it, it's not a great feeling to, you know, get quick shotted and feel like there was no counterplay. But the problem was that the counterplay was already there on survivors halves because you have to aim at someone who is wiggling back and forth, like their ass is on fire and, and still be able to hit them. And the quick shots help that happen. Um, aiming... Um, not only slowed you down now, they speed it up a little bit, but um, but it also takes a little bit of extra time, and that little bit of extra time is going to make a lot of difference. And, and it's it's those small changes that made a killer into something that just just got a hook or, or, or just got someone down, you know, just got the tip, um, and and you know pulled off a really cool play because you know they they practiced, they were skillful, and they made a great shot. And now that shot's not going to happen because that, that, that split second of gameplay, um, which is actually very important often in this game, is, is now gone. You know, same thing about, you know, the reactions to, uh, you know, the, the spirit's now directional um, sound. And, uh, and luckily they also took out, like, it seems they took out the, the dirt being kicked up by her footy steps, but... But yeah, so so another huge, huge killer nerf. Um, pretty decent nerf to the Deathslinger as well, especially with the terror radius increase. That really hurts him. Like that's just gonna like. I mean, if you have to choose between the Huntress and the Deathslinger, like it's it's a no brainer after this patch. Like he just, unless you really 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 love him, but you're gonna be miserable because people are just gonna be gone by the time you finally waddle up to a gen. And, uh, and and so that really hurt him. And and the, there's some there's some okay like uh, things in here. Base trap, you know, trapper gets to carry an extra trap. It took them five years to do that. It took them five years to do that. I'm, I'm not gonna repeat anymore. But like you get the point. And then the rest of these some adjustments and stuff. Here is here's my overarching like issue with with this thing that looks like a, a bunch of killer buffs. Um, well, not the Wraith, they, they nerfed him a little bit, um, but the shape, uh, the pig, all these long lines of text, um, and the plague, um, very, 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 very small portion of these notes are actual, actual, like, changes to the killer. They are add-on band-aids. 
They are not fixing the killer and then making appropriate add-ons for that killer um, being improved. They are leaving the killer essentially how they are, but simply changing some add-ons to band-aid bad design. That's why these things took so long to read is because the only thing they changed on the plague was basically uh, this power button being released early and you get stuffed into the, the cooldown animation and then um, your, base, uh, your, your infection time is increased a little bit and the sickness and we went over that you know like it, it's, it's, it's almost it's almost the weakness that is your power like people can just cleanse it and, um, and they can cleanse it at will and they can cleanse it multiple times um, they get people who came into a match and, and didn't bring anything to heal with can now heal from injured um, to full and be fine uh, just by drinking your magic water. Uh, like, I'll, I'll still give her a go, like, if, you know, once this goes through, because some of those actual mechanical things that were, you know, very annoying with her, like the canceling of your power if you didn't hold it down long enough, uh, felt bad. And then you, you've got a little bit of the speed up. Um, but otherwise, the vast majority of these things that are being changed for these killers and being played off as the dev is paying attention to them is simply like band-aiding stuff with add-ons. You know, doing an add-on pass is basically what it means. Like, we're going to change some stuff because we don't want to change the base killer even though it's underperforming across the board. But we'll jerk around with the add-ons until we can figure out what we're doing because we don't, you know, like... Most of us are rank 18 survivors, and the only killer main actually quit the company a little while ago. So, eh, I am a little bitter about this, but I'm also a little bitter about where SBMM is um, and, and where it's headed. Like, it's all meant to, to you know, have a better starting experience for survivors, and I, God, I fully support that. Um, and also for killers, like, it's, it's hard. Like, this game, this game, for all of its it's a casual game this game punches you right in the face when you buy it like it is not easy and and the first time that you get boot stomped as a killer like it feels bad you might not I might not come back for a week or two and then you watch some videos and then you start fi figuring out what you need to do and maybe you pick up a couple perks and maybe you rank up a couple killers and and then you start learning you're getting better you know um same thing with survivor um, the, the the problem is, is is that with Survivor you you have, and I'm not gonna say an infinite um, skill cap because that's dumb. But the skill cap is not limited by having some janky power that doesn't work or constantly gets nerfed. You know, Survivor is a skin that you put perks into. Shove them right up there. So the the Survivor is is the skill of the person who's driving and the strength of the perks that they're carrying and then the strength of the items that they're carrying. Um, the killer is the strength of the perks that they're carrying and the add-ons, you know, that they're using, but then their power, or lack of power, is what caps them. Survivors don't have to deal with that. They have the entire map to play with. All they have to do is learn how to loop really well and, and be good at it, and I mean, that's skillful. It is, like, I'm not saying that's easy. Like, it's not. Um, but uh, but you, you've got this infinite kind of like a survivor can keep it better better and then there's four of them who are all like up here and then you are a really really good wraith or you're a really really great bubba and you love playing bubba and these people will come over and they will knock your little sandcastle down and they will march out the door because their skill cap is much higher than what you can achieve with this killer because you can only do so much you can only stop so much with your power unless you're the nurse. Unless you're blight and have insane map pressure and insane catch-up. Um, unless you're the spirit who had insane 1v1 and can mind game the crap out of people at pallets, at windows, at loops that no one else in the game could really do outside of nurse. And even there, I mean, you're still, you know, if you break line of sight against her, I mean, she still might miss from time to time, but a spirit would wreck you. Especially a good one. And now that one's gone. So, like, the survivors are still up here and getting new perks and new things to do and new maps like RPD. And they so they keep going up a little bit. And then you're still back down here, like, as killer. I mean, you can you, you, you might have some great games. You might have some bad games. But you're going to have more bad games because these people are just up here. And you're limited by 
like Granny's traps or, you know, Bubba's lack of map pressure or, you know, Pig's RNG and the fact that she's an M1 killer or, you know, Trapper having everybody undo his traps. Like, survivors don't care. Like, no, you're not undoing their perks. And, you know, now they're going to get boon totems. I mean, that's super great. Uh, so that's kind of the thing. Like, that, that's where I, I know it's a bit of a rant. And, um, but I, I really, really feel like the game is headed in a very, very, very bad direction. And I am, I am very, very concerned about it. Um, I am, I am struggling. I am struggling to play it. And like anybody that, uh, and, and watching some of my favorite killer streamers, the people that I have watched to learn how to play over 25, 100 hours of gameplay, like that they have literally stopped playing killer because it feels that bad. Like, and playing their killer, like, it's time to stand up and take notice because this game is, is it, the queues are gonna get long. Like, I'm not saying, hey, I'm quitting, but I, I, I'm I, putting it aside a little bit. Like, I, I'm gonna play some other games and um, I'm gonna watch what happens and I'm gonna make some content. But, uh, but this is, this feels like the beginning of something really bad. And um, in, in their in their quest to make this game more palatable to new players, they are they are they are really really crushing, um, you know, a lot of the people who have helped them build this game to last five years, and it feels real bad for both Survivor and for Killer. Like not every not every person playing Survivor is 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 a is a Red Squad Death Ninja. Like, there's plenty of Survivor people out there who are having just as bad a time and running just as bad as matches because killers are doing whatever they can to do to kill and survivors are doing whatever they can to survive. And it does not does not always work together, right? Like, and on top of a bunch of salt and kind of, like, entitlement and toxicity that is built into our community over the last several years, um, it's, a, it's not a healthy environment. Like, honestly. Like, if you can just close your eyes to it or just play... Um, stuff like if you just casually play once in a while and you're dicking around um, and, and having a laugh with your friends or whatever like you know what it's fine like you're gonna you're gonna win some games you're gonna lose some games and and really your MMR is not gonna go up to a point where it's gonna be an issue um, but uh, but if you play the game at any length of time or if you stream it and you're inevitably gonna gonna go up and and, and your MMR is gonna raise and you're just gonna hit this wall of, of crap and it, it's not fun and I'm sure it's not fun for people who prefer solo survivor and things like that too but they're getting tons of buff too they're getting more information in the game they're getting you know a lot of things are there there's so much more information available to solo survivors even without perks than there ever used to be um, just by changes in the HUD and changes to the game in general um, uh, we'll see um, but we are uh, th this will this was kind of my last streaming week at Dead by Daylight before we do our October fest um, of, uh, uh, of of uh, Doom Eternal and, and spooky games and Phasma with friends, and we're gonna have a good time this month uh, because October's month to rock. Um, but uh, we will be still making video content uh, for Dead by Daylight and just just seeing how things go. Uh, the mid chapter patch isn't supposed to come out until I believe the 19th of October, so there's there's some time. Um, you know, if you want to get into your spirit and use up all your best add-ons because you may not want to anymore afterwards um, But you'll see once again a casual play like you know If you if you just play spirit once in a while you like to whack the crap out of people It's not gonna make a lot of difference like spirit will still be very spirity But at, at the higher levels and, and once you start playing against survivors who have played against enough a, a spirit in their day um, to where like nerfed spirit is it will be a joke compared to you know like I've got to like you know psychically link with the person you know somewhere else on the internet and guess where her spirit is going to be um, and so I can dodge the sword like being able to hear her coming it's going to be laughably easy to to avoid her and it's going to feel super super bad for spirit mains just absolutely it, it just makes me sad like honestly like I I'm not even a spirit main it makes me feel bad um, but, uh, but that's kind of it. Like, I mean, there, there, there's some hope in there, but there, there's also like things, things are weird and they, uh, I've been playing for the better, well, not quite the full five years, but, uh, but long enough to where I've never quite seen things like this. And, uh, 
Luckily, there's a lot of, there's a lot of games to play out there. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to continue to make content for Dead by Daylight, and um, there's also a, a lot of fun stuff to do. And uh, so um, that's going to be it for my uh, patch notes. Um, we'll see what actually goes live. Honestly, I don't think much of this won't go live. I don't think much of it will. Um, the, the boon totems weren't discussed in this patch note build, um, you know, that, that they had here, but that's a whole other video altogether. Um, either they're going to break the game or no one's going to use them once again. Like, either they'll be, like, so good <laughs> that uh, they will be included on every uh, good survivor squad uh, to have, like, a little corner where people are healing and have a little corner where people are shadow stepping around and not leaving scratch marks. <laughs> <laughs> and people are already asking for a buff to that one for the radius. So I was just like, oh my god, like I don't even know what you would do. Oh, sweet Jesus. What a game. What a game. But uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for sticking it out this long. I appreciate it if you've hung out this long with uh, and listened to my mini rant. But things are bad and, and, and people need to know. A behavior needs to know like that that uh, a lot of us are, are struggling and and the game's gonna start falling apart seems pretty quick and maybe that's their intention maybe they want to move on to their next project maybe they want to make that by daylight too and, and learn from the mistakes they've made here you know like sort of pack up shop and, and and start something different but you know they you know they did death garden and what that that didn't even last a year like this was their baby and and this was the thing that they need to bank on and have some success with and that's where they're trying to make it such a level playing field and so much nicer for new people to come into but they're wrecking the game for the people that are not new to the game and uh, it doesn't feel great <clears throat> but once again rant over much love from the old man um, we will be back with a Twins review mon come Monday, and I will be upstreaming next week with some Doom Eternal and some Phasmophobia. So we will see you there. <laughs>